All right, we're live. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today, fellow Wordners. We are going to be talking about plotting in today's chat, uh, starting your story from beginning to end and everything in between, some tips and tricks on how to get started. If we want to go around, each of the Wordners are going to say uh, plotting tips or the best way that they find works for them to plot their story. Uh, okay, we won't start with Megan. Um, Erica, do you, do you oh, want to start us off? Me? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, let me think. Okay, well, for my first book that I wrote, I didn't really plot a lot. Um, I basically just flew by the seat of my pants. I had a basic idea of, yeah, where to start and where I was going to finish, and pretty much everything in between was a giant question mark with little tiny milestones that I'm like, oh, just get to this scene and then this scene. But I've recently found that I'm a huge outliner. I just didn't really outline the first book that I wrote, um, but a new series I'm working on, I've outlined five books because it's going to have a really tricky plot. <laughs> so I found outlining, mostly what I do when I outline is write important scenes down that need to happen. I think if it's too strict of an outline for me, I get too afraid to start writing because then I have to force myself to match that specific outline and not, you know, waver from it. Um, so I'm more of a flexible plotter, or not a plotter, <laughs> depending <laughs> on my mood. Uh, okay, Kelly, do you want to go next? I'm just oh, going down the line. I was hoping it wasn't next in order because my answer is really <laughs> <You're> similar. <next. laughs> oh, okay. yeah. oh. <laughs> fine. Yeah, I'm not much of a plotter. I always thought I was a plotter because I have things like outlined in my head, but I don't really write them down. I let myself deviate if I need to. So I. I write things down in like I have a an Evernote file of like my story vault of ideas. I I have them so I don't forget anything, but I don't have them in front of me while I'm writing, and I just kind of have a I'd like to get from point A to point Z or Z, and kind of, <laughs> kind, yeah, kind of hit C <laughs> F and H on the way there, and then kind of see where it goes. So did you um, see an an Evernote file? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's an app What's that I that? use. That I have, it's on my desktop and it's also on my phone and my tablet. So anywhere I am, that all syncs together. That I can just kind of add stuff to it as I go. Actually, but. that's an awesome idea because I find I have like 32 notebooks and my phone and the computer file and like my notes are <laughs> everywhere. So that's so why I, I like I Evernote because actually the yeah. format is called notebooks. So there's a notebook and you have different notes in that notebook. So I have my story notebook and then different notebooks for different stories and. That's cool. Oh, that's I kind a of, great idea. So I guess I usually sit down and actually start plotting it once I've already written, like, half of it. I'm like, okay, this is what's already happened, and this is these are the plot holes I need to tie up. You're a retroactive plotter. Yeah. A me too. Middle, that's why we work plotter. on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, um, next I, in line I have Kaylin. <laughs> I should probably look into Evernote because I like how you could take it with you everywhere. My current process on like a daily thing is I carry a composition notebook with me all the time and any idea that I have I write it in that notebook and then when I come home if I had like a big idea that day I'll type it up like in its own like Scrivener file that I have. The only thing with that is Scrivener like you can't really back it up in the traditional sense unless you compile it. And yeah. compiling doesn't always work the way that I want it to. So, I mean, you, you guys see in my video, like, I am a hardcore plotter, <laughs> meticulous to the bone, like, <laughs> index cards and everything. And But one thing that I, you do have to remember is even if I have it all laid out in front of me and it seems like it's going to work, you always have to, you're going to have to shift stuff around no matter where it is. So make a plot, but don't, like, don't think you have to stick to it the whole time. Like, you're able to change things as you write. But I, I'm a hardcore plotter. <laughs> <laughs> Megan? I am also a pretty hardcore plotter, like Kaylin. <laughs> um, but I like to, I keep a notebook, too, and it's just, like, a little, like, fake leather one that, like, makes me feel really fancy. <laughs> um, and I carry it around all the time. And when I have a new idea that I decide that I am definitely going to pursue fleshing out fully, I let it sit kind of in my head until I'm so excited about it and I have this beginning in my head that I can't not write it down. 
and because beginnings are like my cupcakes. I just I love writing the beginnings <laughs> of stories, <laughs> and so I just kind of I spit the beginning out. I write like the first three or four chapters, and then from there I hardcore like scene by scene plot it. I start by doing like the skeleton of it with like I think I talked about three act structure on like a vlogger's choice once um, so I'll do like all of my turning points so at the end of each act I'll say well I need to get to this point and then I need to get to this point and then I fill in all the middle and yeah. then I follow it from there I'm actually I'm similar to you Megan um, and like Kaylin as well I'm a hardcore plotter and I really really like the hero's journey for um, just like having the skeleton out there and then I can flesh it out. But it also helps me to, uh, like you guys said before, be sort of uh, open to change and as things come along I might discover something about a character and have to completely change a scene or cut a scene or something like that. So, like, But when I first started writing actually my very first book, I just pantsed it. I totally just sat down, had an idea and wrote. But that ended up with me having a really kind of flat ending and I don't know, I think it would have been improved if I had plotted. So that's what I started doing and I found that the stories that I wrote after that were needed less revisions afterwards. So yeah. See, I, like I, I live stuff. I live for revisions. Like that's my bread and butter. Me too. Megan likes the the <laughs> intro. I love <laughs> rewriting. There's this quote I hate rewrite. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I hate that. There's this quote from Stuck in Love. He says, I'm a terrible writer, but I'm a great rewriter. And, like, that's where I live. My first draft is always just, like, nobody should look at my first draft. <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to see my first draft. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, two or three yeah. drafts down that I'm, like, this is starting to get good-ish. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. And I'll see, go that's... and I'll retroactively yeah. plot. Yeah, see, that's my so, problem, too, though. Like, I'll plot it out, and then I'll start writing, but then I always have my internal editor on, so it's, like, it's really hard for me to actually push through to get more written because I want to go back to the beginning and tweak it and flesh it out a little bit when I should just turn that off and just finish the first draft, but I I can't help it. I, yeah. I, I can't help it. <laughs> I'm, like, have to keep writing. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm really actually, good at pushing through, but... Yes. I and I know that the magic does happen when you're rewriting and I can mm -hmm. definitely attest to that. But it's like just like pulling out my fingernails. I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's painful for me. <laughs> I actually I don't mind rewriting, like I'm just kind of in the middle on it and when Megan kept talking about the how do you say your last name, Susan Denard? Is it Denard? Yeah, it's like How do you say? I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Oh, sometimes I'm I think it's Denard, Susan. and sometimes I say Denard. I don't know how I'm pronouncing it, but Susan Denard has like all this stuff on revising and like worksheets and stuff. So now I'm like really excited to rewrite that my helps story. That helps so I'm, much. Yeah, like it's actually like got me so pumped up, and I actually am like making myself wait like and put it down for a month and not look at it, so it's fresh when I look at it again, right? But it's yeah. so hard because I've got all these awesome worksheets. I'm like, I want to start now. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she makes it hard. so much easier. <laughs> yeah. So like, do you guys work best with worksheets? Think about. Do you yeah. guys work best yeah. with worksheets? Yeah, it's all worksheets. Yeah. Is it like filling in I, information like, or what yeah, are Yeah, so fill in information, yeah. Yeah, what you do is you have like four worksheets. There's one for plot, one for setting, one for characters, and one for others. And then when you're going through and reading your draft for the first time, you, like, write in all of the holes. Um, and then you use the charts to go back and, like, you add scenes and stuff. That makes sense. So, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like that it, organized. <laughs> well, that's exactly why I printed these off, because when I, when I try to tackle rewrites, I just... I can be really easily overwhelmed because I'm like, ah, oh, it's like an 80,000 word manuscript. Like, where do I start? <laughs> what do I do? Like, you know, like it just, it's almost too much. And then I, if I'm not careful, I can get lazy. I'll be like, oh, that seems fine. When it's not, it's crap, right? So I, it's not something that organizes me will make me more dedicated, I think. And we'll see how it goes. I haven't started yet, but I'm really yeah. excited. That's <laughs> how I work, too. Like, is that the spreadsheets that you were talking about, Megan? Yeah, a lot yeah. of my video on <laughs> Yeah, like basically her. 
You get so excited about spreadsheets. I love well, I am too, so yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna <laughs> gonna print those out myself. They just they touch me in my head. <laughs> See, I stay organized through revisions. I color code like in Scrivener. Um, I'll color code each chapter. So I'll have like yep. different colors for first draft, second draft, third yeah, draft, fourth draft, that. after it's seen Kelly, after it's seen another beta reader, after it's seen my editor, and then like the finalized, finalized version of like locked in, ready to publish version. So I just like to see the rainbow change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all red. It's good to go. <laughs> see, me with red means bad. Red means yeah, I need to go me, back over it, like, and I need suck. to do some major work on it. Green means it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I go back to be like purple. Is good. Purple is the start, red is the first. Red's like, mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> Do it. I still I still have not I still haven't got on Scrivener. Like everyone's always talking about it for plotting and stuff, but I'm just so like I don't know. I I'm resistant to change. Well the good thing <laughs> about it is it does have like little cards. It has note cards so you yeah. can yeah, I love them, that. which I love. So you can kind of see what scenes they are. You can also break down each chapter into different sections. Um, so when you compile it, it can be easier to compile and be like, oh, different sections. And there's sheets on characters, so you can have like everything from physical descriptors to their name to like background information. So sometimes I'll have like minor characters who I don't remember how I described them in like chapter three, and I don't want to mm -hmm. describe them blonde in chapter three and then with dark hair in chapter eight. So I'll go back to that and re to their character page. They also have pages for research. It's mm, basically where I keep all of my notes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I love that. Thing too. Yeah, I love it because it will like automatically. You can put them side by side and compare them. Like, so you can be writing in this one and be like looking over at your research in another one, which you can do with like Microsoft Word and stuff. But I just like <laughs> that it's all in one program. <laughs> yeah, that's how I did all my edits for for Ignite. That's the cool. two pages. There is a learning curve to it. It did take me a little while to get used to it and to learn everything. And if you're a Windows user, it's a little bit harder because all of their tutorials are for Mac. Um, yeah. and, and Windows oh, doesn't have Windows. all of the features that Mac does yet. But, oh. um, but after you get the hang of it, it's like, Godsend, like it's the cool. It's like the best app that I've ever used. Yeah, I love it, and it's so cheap. It's forty dollars. Yeah. If you Especially Nano if you do Rimo, Nano Rimo, yeah. yeah. You get if a you discount. finish Nano Rimo, you get a fifty percent discount, and if you participate in Nano Rimo, you get like a twenty five percent discount or something. It's and awesome. Also, there's also if you work well with the Nano Rimo concept, it tracks your um, word count for the day and overall, and there's also a window that will show you how many times you've used certain words. Mm -hmm. I so like I was that. going back there, I'm like, oh man, I use this word way too much. Time to go through and like, I did not know you delete. could do that. I hope that's a Windows feature because yeah, it, it is. It's all Windows. It is all Windows. Yeah. Yeah. I use the word hands all the time. I found it. <laughs> hands. You've used hands 500 like, times. <laughs> why am I okay, you talking about them so much? I have a question for you, you like guys. The, one sec on the Scrivener oh. thing, though, because we could totally do, like, a Scrivener day chat using, like, screen share and stuff and just kind of mm -hmm. showing people why Scrivener is amazing one day. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't well, know how I don't to use YouTube screen share, videos. but I'll figure it out. I don't, yeah. It's, it's just uh, a button. Yeah, Callie and I know how to use it. We've used it before. <laughs> I've accidentally been on video while she did it, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So do you guys write out, like, individual scenes in each chapter, or do you, like, do you break it down, like, into really little details, or do you just do, in this chapter, these three things happen, and in this chapter, like, how in detail do the ones that of you that are plotters go into? Uh, they actually have, like, when you create a new document, it gives you several different templates that you can use, and there's actually one for, I think, like, there's three different fiction templates. One is with parts, and one is without. I write in parts because of the way I use beat sheets. So in that, it's like you have a folder, and then each folder is a chapter, and then each document in that folder is a scene. So instead of just writing down one long document for a chapter, I break my chapters down into scenes and kind of fit them like in that way. I just do that with index cards. I don't need it's, Scrivener. It's actually <laughs> the same exact thing because Scrivener yeah, it really is. is index cards. Yeah. Like there's an index yeah, card view. Index cards. 
Girls, yeah, script your pushers. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not a promotion, but pretty good. I mean, they I like sponsor us in part, any so way. That, that feature is really nice. I like how you can drag and drop it, and you know, so you don't have to like erase it or anything like that. You can just yeah. change the information on it. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not so much of a plotter, but I do actually plan out specific scenes. Like I'll have maybe three or four landmark scenes in the book, kind of spaced out. So even though I have my start and my end basically solidified, there are like three or four stops that I'm like, oh, you have to meet here, here, and here for the end to make sense. And I'll have a, I have like two or three notebooks where I just like wake up in the middle of the night and I have an idea for a scene that might fit in between those or might play part in the one of the big scenes. And I'll just like write down everything I can and it's like really it makes no sense if anybody else were to read it it's really mm -hmm. shorthand it's like a line or like a piece of dialogue or like a word there's blood in this notebook um, that's not part of the well kind of part of the book but <laughs> not purposefully but like it'll just be you know concepts or themes that I want to get across or you know imagery that I'm like oh I just saw this and I have to write it down before mm -hmm. I forget it or like a uh, metaphor will pop into my head I'm like this works so perfectly for this <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'll write it down yeah. in margins and it'll wrap around the entire notebook yeah that's, I have the same that's thing. how I plot yeah. <laughs> I, I develop scenes like my first image of a scene is always dialogue so I have random like quotations all over the book to where if a random person picks <laughs> it up they would have the, like the most awkward conversation ever because it doesn't make sense but also, mm -hmm. I have atrocious handwriting, so no one will be able to make out what I'm writing anyway. I <laughs> no barely can understand it. <laughs> right, it's basically like writing in code because I have the worst handwriting <laughs> ever. But I know. I, can... I really. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else go. <laughs> I'll go. Okay. Okay, I'll <laughs> so I used to just do chapters. And I'd have kind of like a rough outline of, well, these things need to happen in this chapter, and then this one, and then this one. Um, but I found that, for me, my scenes didn't have as much meaning as they needed when I did it that way. And so now, in like my Scrivener documents, I'll just have like scenes, just all scenes. And then when I'm done, I go through and put them into chapters, because when I do it with just a scene and I focus only on like that small fragment, then I'm better able to think, okay, well, this is my conflict for this scene. This is where things change because something has to change in this scene. So that helps me. Well, I really liked um, Susan Denard's thing about each scene should have, like, um, what? I don't remember what Cookies. you said exactly. But yeah, but there's there needs to be, like, a reason for each scene. Like, um, what's the purpose behind each one? What's the, like, climax behind each one? Yeah. And if there's no reason for the scene to be there, why is it there? And I'm just like, okay, that's awesome, because I'm pretty sure that occasionally I'll just go off and be like, oh, this is fun to write about, and then it's like a whole scene that actually really doesn't have a lot of purpose. And if it's just, Wish you know, fulfillment like, scenes. Yeah, or yeah. it's because I'm like, well, I want to describe the house they're in some more. And, you know, I think she even says on her blog somewhere that setting is not enough of a reason for an entire scene to be in the book. And I was just like, mm -hmm. okay, that's a really good point because you are really involved in what you're writing and the scenery and stuff. The reader is going to be so bored, right? So, yeah. I don't know. I just love, I don't know. I'm gonna I be, had to I'm gonna cut a scene like that out Megan. this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be We'll make t-shirts or something <laughs> with her face on them. <laughs> yeah, and the, web, awesome. the website is just susandenner.com, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I'm yeah. bookmarking it right now because I'm definitely going to stalk <laughs> her tonight. She has an amazing four writer section in her blog. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing. There's like tons and tons of stuff you can download and print off that will help you with like every oh. everything, <laughs> everything oh no. from plotting to revising to querying an agent. She even has like a whole like series on how she got her agent and how she got her book deal after that mm -hmm. and stuff. I so love reading those blog posts. It's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So bringing up something Kaylin said earlier, she said she sees scenes in dialogue first. Do we want to talk about how we first see a scene? Like, I know I see mine basically in a picture. Like, I'll see mine very much like a movie, and then I'll get the dialogue and the bits and pieces will fall into place after that. But how do you start writing a scene once you have the, the little outline or plot for it? 
That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I, what, what do you mean? How do you start writing it? I'm like, like Kaylin uh, sees it as dialogue first. That's yeah. where she. That's her oh. springboard. Is dialogue. Right. So right. for me, like when I first start writing a scene, like when I first get that first like seed of an idea, it's always like a line of like a dialogue. And then I'll add in, like, little bits about the conflict and, like, stuff that's going on. But for the most part, like, my whole, like, scene is literally just quote after quote after quote with no breaks in it. <laughs> so a lot of revising will need to get done, but that's how I get, like, most of it on the page. And then I'll go back over and then add in the pros and add in um, the dialogue tags and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've actually heard a lot of writers that do that. And, like, when I first heard that, it mystified me because I don't, I don't do that, like I or like I'll go back and read the thing I have before and like edit it a little bit, which I probably shouldn't. I should just push through it. But like I read somebody <laughs> else saying, well, you know, like I I use he frowned too many times, but I'll just plow through and finish the rough draft, and then I'll go back later and add in other type of emotional responses. So I'm not saying he frowned over and over and over. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea to just. Plow I do through that, and just yeah. Substitute, yeah. Yeah, like if I don't know exactly fine. what's happening at that moment, but I know, like, okay, she, I know she's sad, so I'm like, in parentheses, she's crying, like, and just push through <laughs> that way. I have a lot of, like, asterisks and, like, parentheses awesome in my first draft. That's a good draft. way to just keep writing. Yeah, that's distracting a good way to just go back. get through your rough draft. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I'll, exactly. I'll sit there and I'll dwell on it, and I'll think, okay, how, do I, how am I supposed <laughs> yeah. to say this now? But yeah, you can always go back over it, so that's how see, I, there's a lot I'm, of stuff. I'm a dweller. I dwell <laughs> yeah. way too much. I'll like, <laughs> I have this problem where when I start writing, I forget simple words that I know. So I'll sit there <laughs> for like, like 20 minutes trying to be like, what's the thing like when you put like your legs go like this? And my sister's like, what are you talking about? I'm like the thing, I'm like, oh, hang. And she's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like what are you talking about? I'm like, it's a problem. <laughs> I'll dwell and get, I can't, I don't know, my brain gets like stuck and I can't move forward until I find the word. See, like I'll put in like a, a description of a word I'm thinking of or my big thing is um, uh, my, uh, when I first started writing this, it was a lot more scientific-y and there was like an actual like DNA strain part of the plot, so I would have in like quotations or in parentheses like consult scientists or like <laughs> look up fancy word here, insert something smarter than this here. Like I, I had a lot of that. <laughs> like, that I have I can like pull a, a draft. I have um, like really angry red notes throughout my story, like because I didn't want to stop, so I was just like, you know, I'd realize something and be like, does she have a bathroom in her bedroom or not? going down the hall to the bathroom and the other half she's like oh I just took a shower and came out into the bedroom and then I'm like what the heck wait like so I have these angry red notes in my manuscript like stupid like fix this get so <laughs> mad at yourself you wrote this yeah. wrong <laughs> yeah. Don't like, you know where the did way the way knapsack come from like she suddenly has a bag or something I had a just, disappearing like, backpack yeah. yeah I had a disappearing backpack so watch You're the backpack like, oh. <laughs> well, in my like current my current one, she has a violin that she's supposed to be like a really, really attached to and carry everywhere with her. But like entire scenes, I'll catch myself not mentioning the violin once, and then I'll be like, no, she has to be like holding it or something. So that's the type of thing <laughs> I'll have to go back and like put back into it. So yeah, there's all kinds of little things like that. But those are other things. I think that we can talk about rewriting as well because that's a huge part of plotting, at least for mm -hmm. me. Because the plot will change yeah. drastically. Yeah, you have to well, accept when something writing. isn't working and yeah. kind of. And write it, yeah, like I'll be writing new scenes, like putting in uh, more of certain characters, like, yeah, stuff like that. So Yeah. Um, I know we have a couple of questions here on Wattpad. Do we want to go through those? We, we have, have, these yeah, we have a question on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> do we have, okay, let's do it. Do we want to start with the one on YouTube? Because there's just yeah. one there that I yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. People who are we watching live right. gets to the bump, bump to the front of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> this is from I'm No Dog. <laughs> okay. um, hi, Word Nerds. Don't you find it hard when you're writing between the scenes you've previously plotted? Sometimes I feel lost when I'm writing between major moments in the story. So like we talked about, how I'll, I'll have my mile markers Filling in the gaps can be daunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually. That's Especially, a really good question. Yeah, and in, in the B sheet that I use, like, when you're in, I think it's in uh, part, once you get into part two, 
Like, there's a specific, like, milestone where it says fun and games, where you're supposed to put in, like, the lighthearted stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? Like, <laughs> oh, what am I supposed to do me. here? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I, I actually it. do, I have, I have trouble if I, if I don't have something really plotted out, and then I leave off, and I come back to it the next day, then I'll just sit there and stare at the screen, because I don't have anything yeah. plotted, and I don't know where to start, so what I do, every time before I leave my computer, <laughs> I, uh, I'll put next, and then I'll have, she does this, and then this happens, and at least three lines, so I can jump back into it right away. Yeah. So I know what's going on, so I don't get stuck. All right, it's always scary to walk yeah. away when you're in the middle of writing. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's I've, I've like forgotten what we were talking like, about because at was least one thing's gonna happen next. So involved in Megan moving so rooms. By Megan. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, moving. I'm like, moving room. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think overall, don't you think that the middle uh, part of a novel is the hardest to write? Like the beginning yes. and the end. Even if That's you're why, whether you're a plotter yeah. or just like a pantser, you're the middle is this giant desert that you have to cross through and hopefully don't die and get yeah. eaten by vultures. Yeah, you yeah, still have to keep it interesting yeah, and get to the end. <laughs> That's why they call it the sagging middle, though, right? It's famous for that. But, like, mm -hmm. I think that a yeah. plot, like, a skeleton of your plot outline really helps. Because, like, one of the things in, I don't remember if it's the hero's journey or the other skeleton thing I was working with, but it's, like, from your, there's, like, your normal life where you establish your character's normal life. Then there's the inciting incident where crap hits the fan. And then after that needs to be a series of increasingly risky or dangerous things that happens to your character. Like it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And then the climax hits. So the middle mm -hmm. shouldn't be just like sagging and nothing. It should yeah. be just like your character keeps screwing up or keeps <laughs> having horrible things happen to them so that it, it builds up and up and up and up and then bam, the big kaflooey or whatever. Right, yeah. so the middle shouldn't sag; it should ramp up the tension. Yeah, the right? plot should mm -hmm. definitely be always moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like yeah. in the middle, like even if your character like quote unquote wins, like something in the middle, it's more or less a false win. So it's kind of like yes. that lull that like yeah. either something really great happens the but calm falls short. The storm. Exactly, that that calm yeah. before the storm, and that rises yeah. tension, and that pushes me yeah. really deeper and into actually, the story. It, Actually, that's a really good plot thing, too. Like, you almost trick the reader into thinking that the character has won, or the characters come out on top, and then usually something awful happens after that. Pull the rug. Which is, yeah. yeah, you pull the rug out from underneath them, and sometimes it's a direct result of whatever it was that the character apparently won, right? So there's consequences for the action, even though they think mm -hmm. that they've done a good thing, or whatever, right? So... Yeah. yeah. I always find <laughs> the middle so hard to write for me, just because I get... I mean, Megan gets so excited about the beginning, and when you start writing a story, it's like, this is a new story, and I'm excited about these characters, and this, this like, plot, and this story's going to be so great, and then you kind of hit a lull until the end, and you're like, I'm writing the end of a story, yeah. which is mm -hmm. why, you know, give yourself little scenes to look forward to. That's, mm -hmm. that's what yes. got me through writing yeah. a full novel. It's the least exciting part sometimes in <laughs> the middle. Yeah. 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 At least I always, right. If I, not... I hear Fairly often that, you know, if you're bored, the reader's bored, so figure out why yeah. it is you don't yeah. want to be writing this. Yeah, I was actually just going to say yeah. that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I actually, yeah. what I did with my current work in progress is, like, when I did find myself getting bored or, like, I wasn't sure what I was going to write next so it was sagging, is I just put in a really, like, it still, like, it still fit in with the plot. I didn't know I was going to do this, but put in a really, like, high, intensely emotional scene, which I find... Mm -hmm. Um, fun to write or interesting to write. So I don't know. That was just for the one thing. But you know, you can't just throw in something. It kind of needs to also push the plot forward. But that was my trick for this current work in progress. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So any other questions about on YouTube or not on YouTube? Not that I'm seeing. I do think though. Nope. One thing: make sure you're not just putting arguments in for the sake of. Well, I need some sort of conflict yeah. in this scene. Yeah. An argument is not always the right kind of conflict to have. Um, so definitely be wary when you're looking for things to kind of amp up a scene. That it's not always just kind of a petty, like when Tristan Four have an yeah. argument and he yeah. says she's just jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, 
that was just an argument that. for the sake of arguing. Yeah, and not for the sake of drama. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drama for sake of drama is Is forced, obnoxious. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. your readers will see right through it. So just yeah. Yeah. And they'll be more annoyed than anything else. Annoyed with the characters and annoyed with the lack of plot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I have a few questions here. Then, if there's no more live questions, we are good. Okay, excellent. So I've got one from Wendy Hamlet. Um, Dear Mm -hmm. Warners, how do you suggest keeping a plot flowing smoothly through a series? I'm having trouble spacing the action and finding difficulty in setting up a constructive and full plot in each book. Hmm. That's tricky. Like, that's what I'm tackling now because I think it's going to be a trilogy, so I'm kind of letting some stuff go that don't really fit in with the first book and pushing it to, like, later books. But the one thing I'm, I'm working on right now is that each book has to have a purpose. Each yeah. book has to have its own plot. And, like, yeah, it's going to feed off of the first and of the books before it, but it needs to have its own purpose. Yeah. I know I've said this That's before, true. but in case we have any new people, I always like to think of it as a TV series kind of thing so that each book is an episode that has its own complete arc and then there's the series arc is your complete season. Kind of how I look at it, that it's if it's a TV show, you still need a complete story by the end of the, the episode when you're sitting there watching TV, and you yeah. want to put the book down with a complete story and feeling like you've accomplished something in enjoying this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whereas the, mm-hmm. the full series or season also needs a complete arc that makes sense through all the books. So just kind of, yeah. I don't, there's no easy advice to give on how to do it, but just how to yeah. look at it. You also might want to consider, if you're having trouble finding a plot for each of the book. Um, or each of the books, you might want to consider maybe not having it as a series. Like, don't force a series that's not going to work as a series. Some books are great standalone books. See most any, actually, any John Green book is a standalone book. Mm -hmm. Um, If it doesn't work as a trilogy, consider duology, or consider duology with an e-novella if you still have some kind of story you want to be told, but that might not take up a full novel. You just want to make sure that you're not trying to pull out a story that, you know, you don't want to stretch it too thin because there will be holes and it might get slow in some parts or kind of dull. So if you can't plot out for three full books or however many books are in a series, consider having fewer books. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I might get... I might get shot for saying this, but like uh, this isn't a young adult <laughs> series. But when I was when I was a young adult, I read all of Robert Jordan's books like obsessively, um, and because I really I really like him, I still really like him. But I don't remember how many books he wrote in his lifetime. It was like a crazy amount. But I actually stopped reading the series at one point because he I found that he was recycling ideas and recycling like. Plot, little plot points and stuff, and then it would just be in a different setting or it would be a different character. And to me, it felt like, okay, can we wrap it up now? Because yeah, I think I think we've run out of ideas. Yeah, it's kind of like those bands who every song on their album sounds the same. Yeah, Um, Yeah. I kind of I had that same problem with the Divergent series though. With that last book, I kind of felt like it was the same story told with different players, and that's Mm -hmm. what really got me out of that story. Yeah, Yeah. I think Um, that. There's a lot of pressure for authors to write more books because the fans really want more books. Mm-hmm. And so maybe the publisher will say, like, hey, you need to write another one. And then maybe they don't necessarily didn't have anything planned or that was all for that story, right? So Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like people asking Rainbow Rowell to write another Eleanor and Park book. And she's like, no. <laughs> We're yeah. not going to. This yeah. is the end of the story. Yeah. I think an author definitely needs to know when to walk away from a series and when to kind of end it. because. Okay, it's done. Yeah. Even if someone's like, please write more, please, you know, it's like the well, story's end, ended. Yeah, exactly. You know when mm-hmm. you're the author, it's you like, know when um, the story. Let them live their completion. lives. Now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like everyone was telling J.K. Rowling to write another book, and thank God she didn't, because well, just for the Harry Potter series. Right? Everyone's about, like, you wrote everyone about, looks you wrote so about, don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> 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 you're all like your lips are all pressed together so hard right now. I'm Even sorry. before you oh, said God. that, when you were talking sorry. about, you know, just let the story go, thinking. Thinking. and just let the uh-huh. characters be. Uh-huh. Just let the characters be. Leave them alone. As soon as I said J.K. Rowling, I was like, oh crap. I was like, they should not have rolled. You started it. 
<laughs> You're the one who did this. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I apologize. Oh. Moving we'll on. Do, I do think, we'll... though, that if you are, like, convinced that it needs to be a series and that there ought to be multiple books, maybe look at the characters themselves, look at your protagonist, look at your villain, and think about just how that one person is going to be developing and what things they would be reacting to and changing and adjusting. Because especially in like a trilogy when things start to lag, I feel like it's a lot of times because people have stopped it, stopped acting. Whereas like the villain might be still doing things realistically. And so just look at your characters and think about them as real people. You can also and, consider a uh, timeline because some people yeah. like they'll skip a lot of time when it's if you're trying, like, if you're short on scenes or um, content, you can explore the time you'd normally just kind of skip over. If there's something significant happening, you know, you don't want to just have, like, explain every time she goes to the bathroom or takes a shower or goes to sleep or, you know, don't... Who doesn't want to read that stuff? <laughs> I mean, That's my favorite part. <laughs> always have me wondering, when does Candace go to the bathroom? I know. <laughs> what about that? <laughs> You know, if you consider timeline and what time you're skipping versus what you're dedicating to actually writing out, you can probably find some wiggle room there, if not a little. Actually, um, this, this question here is almost the same thing we were talking about, which is, dear word nerds, what about filler chapters? I have trouble with chapters in between action. So we sort of discuss that a that's, little bit. Yeah, so, that's hard. Yeah. Just because there's but, no action doesn't mean it's filler. There shouldn't be a yeah. filler yeah. chapter. I don't, Plus, I don't I actually totally... like the name filler. Like, no, if it's a I was filler chapter, don't put it in there at don't all. Like, that in. sounds like a terrible yeah. chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's peanuts there in a packing no, box. Yeah, yeah, there should be no yeah. filler in your story because readers don't want to read filler. They want right. something to happen. Yeah. It, so especially in YA. Words that, words. Yeah. 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 Every scene every scene should accomplish something. Even if it's something small like development between characters. It doesn't always have to be like action, 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 because then you'll There's get exhausted no as a reader. Yeah. 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 And it, it doesn't always need to be development that the reader automatically like picks up. Like you, you could throw in a smoking gun there and have a random scene of them talking about something specific to where when you're reading it you don't think anything of it, but then towards the end it's like a revelation happens, you're like, oh yeah, that goes with that yeah. conversation that happened earlier. So like, yeah. it, it doesn't need to serve a purpose, not necessarily at the time yeah. that you're It doesn't reading, have to be an obvious purpose. Yeah. yeah. For example, yeah. in John Green's Paper Towns, one of the characters starts dating one of the very popular girls, and there's this one scene, and all they do in that scene is talk about this popular girlfriend and he just talks about how, like, oh, well, I thought that she was hot and amazing and cute and funny, and now that I'm dating her, I'm seeing these other sides to her, and it's like I'm having to like a whole different person. And when you're reading it, you're like, oh, that, uh, that's nice, that's kind of profound, that's cool. But then by the end of the book, you realize that it really was, like, a statement on the whole theme of the novel, and that it was Which really, really awesome. relevant. For yeah, shadowing. I love stuff like that. I love stuff yeah. like that. Because you go back later and you're like, oh, I get that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love stuff like that. Yeah. I wish I was Bottom better at putting that stuff in my books, actually. I know. Me yeah. too. Bottom line is downtime <laughs> right. doesn't have to be boring. It can serve yeah. a purpose and still be interesting yeah. without being yeah. like... And the you're allowed... <laughs> beyond, like, you can have subplots. It doesn't have to be serving your main plot. There still has to, like... It's good if they're kind of weaving together, but there can be mm -hmm. more than one important thing going on in your book. So mm -hmm. your filler chapters could be serving a different character storyline or something else that may... Like a villain? Yeah. 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 I kind of feel like there needs to be more than one arc in the story. Yes. Too. Like, yeah. You have to have... Oh, yeah. Every character subplots. has its yeah. own purpose because... <laughs> There's some quote somewhere about how everybody believes that they're the hero of their own story. Like, the villain doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. They think they're doing something great, and they're, like, the hero of their story. They're not the villain of their own story. I think, Megan, you did a video about this, maybe? Was it you, or was it I think it we Aaron? talked about it in a Yeah, we talked about it a couple of times. We, did, we should I find an actual quote, because we talk about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I also did a video on villains as well. Oh, yeah. I, re I remember the video on villains. <laughs> the hat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the mustache and hat. Yes, it was awesome. Um, I have another question here. 
Um, actually, this is concerning villains. Um, when concerning plot, when should you implement the villain or problem? When is it too early? So when should the bad guy come in? The bad guy specifically or the it problem? It depends what kind of bad guy. guy is like, yeah. well, it doesn't always have to be a bad guy, but she, she just said bad guy slash problem. So the, I think it's or. never too early for the problem. Yeah. You can have yeah. a problem yeah. first page, first sentence. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. believe in setting up too much of the character's normal life. That it's kind of you want to have that inciting incident it's, again, especially in why you want to grab your reader as soon as possible. That it just hook yeah. them right away. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to. You can show later by contrast of what their life is before that what their life was their normal life and it isn't anymore. But you don't yeah. spend too much time just kind of mulling around and letting your character be bored because then your reader will get bored. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. Exactly. So if your character is waiting for something to happen, your reader probably is too. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like, um, like we find out in my current manuscript, we find out what's going on, like, early in the first part, but my bad guy, my villain, doesn't actually show its face, um, per se, until, like, it's just after that first plot point. It's closer to, like, um, it's between the midpoint and the first plot point. And, like, that makes sense in my head, because I've seen the beach <laughs> shit all the time. I, I, I know what you're saying. But, yeah. Yeah. But um, it, it's close to uh, after the first plot point because, like, while finding out and knowing what the context is or the conflict is, um, I do like to see exactly what they're up against um, semi-early on you to kind of drive home w what that conflict is and to deepen it. You can also be really sneaky about your villain, which is something I've been wanting to do is... You can introduce a character who seems perfectly fine until you get to the end and you're like, this guy is the bad guy? Mm -hmm. And kind of like <laughs> flips everything all around. Like you can introduce problems without it being entirely obvious. Again, it's going for obvious versus more subtle um, plots going on. And I just don't think that it's ever too early to introduce a villain. I love villains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. And I actually had a question similar to that, but instead of villain, um, what about love interest? Because the like mm. work in progress I have now, the love interest doesn't come in until, uh, I don't know, one third of the way through the book. And now I'm like, maybe I should go back and put him to come in a little earlier. What do you guys think? Is, the, is their relationship like an actual plot arc? Like, is it a big part of the book? Uh, yeah, it is. It is a subplot, yes. So maybe we should heard... have passing contact, uh, contact with them. Yeah. Right? Well, it. she hears about him. Like, so, so she hears that she should stay away from him, like, early on in the book. And, yeah, that's how he's introduced. He's, he's actually introduced as a villain in, like, the very start of the book. Have you and read the Mara has... Dyer series? Because I think it's oh. you need to read. I've read the first one of Mara Dyer. <laughs> I, think... I actually really liked it. Yeah, the it's last one of my favorite in August. I know. <laughs> it's far away. <laughs> it is. But I don't know if it, because, like, when I read, um, oh, boy, why don't, um, uh, Lanny Taylor's book, um, why? Uh, Daughter's, Daughter's Mother, Mother Smoke, Smoke and Bones. Yeah, the love interest doesn't come in until almost, like, one-third of the way either, right? Like, he doesn't I, come in yeah, until. he's not there. I mean, we don't know he's yeah. a love interest when we meet him. I think it's yeah, relatively like, early. Like, yeah, I think he sees her early yeah, on. Yeah, he's, uh, he's following, he's place. marking all of the doors, like, really yeah. early on. Mm -hmm. And then right. um, later it finds out, like, oh. It really depends what kind of, what it's kind, kind of, of a story It's because you think right? he's going to be the villain. Yeah. But yeah. then he's the love interest. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the villain. I think and people I are like, so, <laughs> people are so worried about introducing a love interest early because you are afraid of that, like, insta-love thing. But I think yeah. you can introduce the character early and let mm -hmm. the relationship kind of wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's how you stop insta-love, not just introducing them and having them fall in love right away or later. Introduce them early. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, there's, like, a different guy she meets first, and, like, everyone's going to think that this is the guy. Like, I they know will. Sure that's they will. Happen. Every time the first guy or girl yeah. who walks in, like, that's it. Setting my sights on them, getting ready Especially to like them. Especially that make eye contact or anything, it, it's there. See, yeah. in my current work in progress, I get that, like, with my critique partners looking at it, they're like, he's, he sounds cute and stuff, maybe though. And like, well, he's gay, so that's not going to happen. So I think, I think you can put it in later and still have it done well as long as you don't rush it. 
Mm -hmm. like right. As long as it's natural, you can really introduce them whenever. Whenever. And if yeah. the character has something more important to worry about than who they're going to make moony eyes at right now, then we're, the, yeah, it, it yeah, needs exactly. to wait anyway. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Yep. That's what I always struggle with because I always want to have a romantic subplot in, but she's also usually running for her life or something, right? So there's always yeah. so much mushy, smushy time that you get in while you're someone's trying to stab you. And Eric yeah. is dancing, so... I, we've got a bunch of questions and comments okay, awesome. on YouTube. But are we are we done with this topic? I don't want to interrupt. Mm, go. Do it. She's Ask just doing the hand, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll start with this one from Jordan. I have trouble going from scene to scene. How do you know what scenes will push the plot forward? You have to write them out first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to end up writing scenes that just be like, yeah, I don't need this. Yeah, you're so, going to cut so. scenes and, and shorten them or stretch some yeah. out. It's going to rip your soul out, but you're going to sit and you're going to write <laughs> so many thousand words and you're going to realize that you don't need a single word of it. Kill your darling. And it hurts. Yes. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. Save it to use, you know, save it to use as like bonus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Content like you don't have to erase it from existence entirely, but I'm, pull it out of your book. Yeah, like I'm a believer in don't ever delete, like legitimately delete anything that you've ever written. Like keep, like I always in my Scrivener, I keep like yeah. a folder at the very bottom called Discarded. Yeah, and then I throw <laughs> all my scenes that I discard down there because you don't know, maybe you could tweak them and use them in uh, a later book or a different book or maybe. Um, something that's just beautiful there that you want to use later. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You might have an idea or a line or something. To make as it better, for, exactly. Yeah. As for scenes yeah. that will push your plot forward, you want to make sure that every scene is accomplishing something. Um, if it doesn't accomplish something, whether it's plot, character, uh, background, we discussed earlier setting, but you can't devote an entire scene to just describing setting. If it doesn't accomplish one of those things, it might just be something that you enjoy and your reader wouldn't really understand the point of it. So if it's not contributing something to the story, if you could delete it, basically, and have the story still be the same, then it's not pushing yeah. the plot forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much summarizing it right there. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? Uh, let's see. I am me geek. I can never get myself to write in my free time, and often because of that I lose interest and or forget some of the purpose. How can I get myself to write more in my spare time? Do it consistently. Set up mm -hmm. a schedule. I have that same problem. Like, if I don't write at least uh, 500 words every day, I'll slowly start to pull out of the that initial inspiration. That's where um, I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been too busy. <laughs> and it's terrible. So even if, like, you want to go through and just edit a chapter because you don't really feel like, you know, putting words on the page, just read a little bit of something that you've wrote and written. Oh, my God. <laughs> written the day before. <laughs> and uh, um, every day. Like, try every day. Like, it's hard. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to pull out, like, so many thousand words. Like, I know a lot of writers like to pull out, one like, a thousand words a day. That's um, what I used to do. Yeah, there's no way that I could do that. Um, <laughs> but either editing, uh, add in a little yeah. bit of words, or plotting read something, yeah. plotting, fleshing out plot. Character not, development. Yeah. You're yeah. only sitting down to write 100 words. Just do the 100 words. Yeah. And you may, and you'll probably end up doing more, but just make yourself sit down to do that little bit. Yeah. I'll usually yeah. One of the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, one of the things I've had to do is... Cause since I moved to, to California, I've, like, really struggled with depression and stuff, just trying to find jobs and all of that, and it's just, like, a really big struggle. And so it's affected my writing a lot, and so if I want to sit down and write, I have to, like, say no internet at all, just, like, turn off the internet, because if I do anything other than sit down and start writing immediately, I'll, like, pull up jobs and be like, oh, look, best thing I've got is Olive Garden Host. <laughs> 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 um, and so just like sitting down and saying I'm not going to do anything until I start writing can be just so helpful. Yeah, it, it, that's actually a huge tip because I'll when I open my computer, the first thing that pops up is I have Twitter open, I have Facebook open, I have Tumblr open, sometimes I have YouTube open, I'll have whatever research site I'll open and a browser for my school. And I'm like, which should I do first? And it's always social media, anything, usually Tumblr. <laughs> yep. Tumblr. 
And I'll be like, I'll just do it for like 30 minutes. And then three hours later, I'm like, well, <laughs> there goes my time for writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close yeah. the browser. Like, we've opened a browser if you're researching for your writing, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, it's also hard, like, really set time to be like, this is my writing time. I'm not going to do anything else. And set goals and reward yourself for writing. Like, make it fun. Yeah. Give yourself candy, candy or something. Yeah. Candy. <laughs> what was happening? You know what was going to happen. Candy is my number one motivator. Or and tell someone else now. if you're setting Mine goals. So, tell someone you live with, okay, I'm going to write 200 words today. And have them ask you, okay, did you write that 200 words today? So it's not yeah. just mm -hmm. yourself. And you can say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. So you have yeah. someone else to be accountable to. Yeah, and that works. Like, holy crap, does that work for me. Like, uh, a couple of uh, my in-laws um, have found out about me writing, and then over, like, just before Christmas, um, you know, they found out about the word nerds and everything. So at Christmas, everybody's asked, no, how's the word going? And I got to say, like, oh, I got about 75,000 words written. Like, oh, wow, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, I actually written something this year. So yeah, I was able to glow a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> holding, holding like, what are you writing? Oh, oh, I haven't written yeah. anything in a yeah. while. So yeah. Like, and beta readers are helpful for that, too, because Kelly yeah. will be like, hey, when are you sending me a next chapter? I'll be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> write that, I guess. <laughs> you yeah. should. I, yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just don't set, like, if you are going to go with someone to be accountable to, make sure you're setting realistic goals. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes Definitely. I'll tell my husband, like, I'm going to write a thousand words today. And he'll come in and be like, how many words did you write? <laughs> Twelve. I'm never going to be a writer. <laughs> I took at everything. <laughs> so definitely set realistic goals, even if it's just like, okay, well, once a week, someone's going to ask me if I have written. Yeah. Or you can say, like, I want to write this scene or this chapter. Or yeah. I want to write a background story that has nothing to do with like going into my novel, but I want to write a background on one of my characters so I know who they are better. Something like that to kind of like, you know, motivate you to write. Mm -hmm. I in one of my creative writing classes, we learned, um, you know, it's like exercising. You have to sit down every day and do it until it becomes like weird to not sit down and write for that time. It's yeah. a habit that you're going to build, and then it'll feel weird to break it, as opposed to when you start out, it feels weird to sit down and write for an hour a, a day, or write 500 words a day until it's like, switches. And it mm -hmm. will sometimes help to do free writing before you start, if you're just like, sometimes I get nervous before I start writing, because I'm like, I don't want to screw it up. Yeah. So you just kind of write everything yeah. and anything, and then you'll just be in the writing mode and ready to spew your story all do over you, that screen. Do all of you girls get that? Because when you said that, that made me go like, oh, it's not just me. Like, do all of you get that? Like, you feel nervous? Like you're I get really so nervous. nervous. Sometimes, like, my adrenaline starts pumping. <laughs> like, really? Okay, okay, I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'll hilarious. avoid it because I'm too nervous to, like, I'm not going to do the scene justice or this character yeah. justice. I, yeah, I'm like, the scene away. is always more beautiful in your head. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I actually find myself especially going the on first Twitter draft. and yeah. Tumblr and Wattpad because I'm just like, I'll do it in a minute because I'm yeah. just like, Let oh, me yeah. I don't know if I can write the scene this. correctly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. putting stuff off because I'm like, I'm freaked out until I actually start writing. Then it's fine. Yeah. But like the minute before you start. You get it's so weird to get so oh. panicked. Nobody's gonna read this. Yeah. No one's reading yeah. it. <laughs> so it's Not just like. <laughs> Not, not to mention, like, I write every single day. Even if it's just 500 words, I still write every day. So for me to, like, repeatedly every day be like, I'm scared. It's weird. It's really weird. <laughs> Writers are weird creatures. Sometimes Writers you just have to so slap weird. yourself in the face and be like, suck it up. You write this scene and you do it well. <laughs> then you get candy. It. Yeah, you get candy at the end. <laughs> just do it for the candy. So That's like, do it for the children, but better. What? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> that left my mouth. That's the that we're at in life, you know. Steady. <laughs> we have more questions. Okay. Uh, this one's from Michelle. <laughs> Moving on from the children. Um, is it possible to have too many little conflicts and plot twists in your book? When I'm writing, I sometimes find that I can't find the right balance between the plot being too boring and having too much crammed into a book that it seems unrealistic. Yeah, there's probably a limit there. Yeah, yeah. I, definitely. I took, I went to a writing conference almost a year ago now, um, and it was awesome because there was a whole uh, workshop that I went to for this, 
and it was talking about how for every like big action type thing, you need to have a scene of reflection. Like your character needs to have time to think about what's happened and to process it, whether react they're to it. Yeah, to react to it. Yeah. So whether have they're the talking fallout. to another character or there's a fallout, yeah. So yeah. for every crazy thing that happens, make sure you balance it with something where things aren't in yeah. flames or also, <laughs> you probably don't want to overload on like super dramas. Like you want one yeah. big like incident and then everything else yeah. can kind of build up to it, like you know, little tiny ones, and they're like, this is the, this is it. You don't want to confuse your readers and have them guessing, like, what the main conflict is, um, mm -hmm. which I sometimes did in the Divergent series. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you want to make sure to have it centered or focused on one main conflict, and maybe have the other little ones you have kind of revolving around the main conflict, like planets. You know, they have something to do with the main conflict or some kind of fallout from the main conflict. So it's not too all over the place? Yeah. Yeah, I actually read somewhere that, like, like a rough estimate of how many different, like, tiny explosions but they said that you should have in a story. It was, like, basically around three, they call it disasters, three disasters, and then short times to recover afterwards so that even the reader does need downtime afterwards. You can't have, like barraging them constantly with action from all sides, or it's almost exhausting. It's tiring. Or they die. Yeah, yeah. So that's what they said about around three mini disasters, and then the and then downtime after that, and then the climax. That's very like cut and dry. This is how it is. That's not mm -hmm. necessarily how yours has to be. It's a good guideline, though. Yeah, it's guidelines. I wouldn't have like a lot more than that personally, but yeah. As for cool. twists, you don't want to <laughs> twist it too many times, where it becomes. Uh, if anybody's Ridiculous. seen the show Pretty Little Liars, <laughs> yes. for example, of no. terrible Ezra. writing, everything's twisted, like, every other week. It's like, oh, what? And it's just like, it's making me dizzy. Enough with the twist. <laughs> Let's just get down to business. You're, you're well, exhausted. the last season. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I just, well, I gave up. That show is on my Netflix. I can't give I read, up. I read, the, I read the description of it, and I'm like, that sounds like crap. Like, there's nothing, it's that sounds like the worst lot. show on earth. <laughs> you know, it started out with a little bit of promise. I mean, it's an ABC original family show, so there you go. But um, it, it just, it, they keep trying to make it, like, so dramatic by twisting it. And, like, this is, Maybe this is happening. Maybe this boyfriend of, is the bad guy, and now this boyfriend is the bad guy. Actually, I might, be thinking, of, I might be thinking of She's Gossip Girls, actually, on Netflix. Oh, well, that's, oh, yeah. that's like, a different beast of itself. <laughs> Exactly. I, I haven't watched yeah. either of them. I won't touch either of them. Yeah, I just read the, I just read the thing, and I was like, no. Because it's like, oh, rich, preppy girls are like that's unbelievably yeah, that's gossip, attractive. That's gossip girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like unbelievably attractive, um, rich, preppy girls backstab each other repeatedly. I'm like, wow, that sounds terrific. <laughs> Pretty yeah. Little Liars is basically, the basic plot is, oh, she's gone. Oh, no. So I wasn't even bother explaining it. Basically, my problem with the show is that it has too many twists for the sake of just being dramatic, and it's hard for the readers to, or the readers? The well, viewers. I haven't read the books, but maybe. I think the they're similar with the whole, like, this person's A, and now that we figured this out, it this is going to be A. I think as a reader or a watcher of TV, it gets exhausting to be like, you're lying to me now. You're not twisting. You're just, you're lying you're at this lying. point. It's flat well, out lying. That is in the title. Deception. Pretty <laughs> little liar. <laughs> you gotta expect they, that, uh, I mean, they did warn me. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. Dead they're pretty, the they're place. little, they're lying. <laughs> yeah, they are all three. Oh, dear. So, like yeah, keep, keep it, keep it low on plot twists and conflicts and, you know, don't, overload mm -hmm. your reader. Don't a, overdo it. <laughs> we got another question. This one is from Oceanic, uh, Oceanic Unicorns. Excellent. Oh my gosh, it's like a seahorse seahorse. <laughs> <It's> like um, <laughs> a unicorn on the <laughs> What if you want the villain to also kind of be the good guy? Would that be a stereotypical and overused, or would I be able to get away with that? Read Shatter Me. Yes, um, I was just about to say that. <laughs> villains can be complex. They think they're yes. good guys, and they're probably not all completely evil. I mean, there's actually this article on Yahoo the other day where um, a Nazi general was writing letters home to his family, and he's like, kisses, I love you, from Auschwitz. And it's like, 
What? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. to his family, he's a good guy. He's, you know, he's just doing what his country tells him to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's not a good guy. He's a Nazi, so... Yeah. <laughs> but, or you know, they're, yeah. they're complicated. If you make them only evil, yeah. it might be kind of fake <laughs> or really cheesy. Yeah. Mustache, cheesy. twirling the mustache, mustache. Twirling, cheesy, railroad yes. behind me, tie yeah. <laughs> yeah. you Yeah. You definitely want complex characters, like, like, like Warner off Shatter Me. I absolutely love him. We're going like, to have to talk about just, that series. I'm reading Unravel Me now, and I'm like, I love him even more. I don't <laughs> I, want I'm him with all emotions. So many emotions. Yes. So, I'll yeah, try and to, push through the series. I don't know if I'll question, be able to. Yes. Because of all the metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The metaphors are hard for me. You'll but either I'm love her style of writing. I'm going to try it. it. Yeah. You'll either there love it or few, hate it. There are a few parts still for me that I was like that's too much but I still enjoy the the characters and like yeah the character I love her style of writing I love her style of writing the the plot is I mean the plot's maybe not the best but the way she writes her characters is just the characters are really compelling yeah yeah and yeah to answer the question absolutely I love it actually when the bad guy you get like a little hint of the fact that maybe he's he's not like that bad or maybe there's like redemption in store for her for him like somebody yeah. was saying the other day I always wanted Malfoy to turn to the good yes. side I always yeah. wanted because he had potential to do so was and that all you I got was a I hug I <laughs> always wanted him to redeem himself and get with Ginny <laughs> me too like always <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ginny. she could have handled him See, <laughs> I think he that would have been awesome too so yeah to answer the question, please do. <laughs> well, it's also Redeem realistic to have bad guys have some good in them, because, like, yeah. if you think about it, there aren't, like, the people you you hear about on the news doing terrible things, they're regular people. Like, you don't see them on the street and go, like, you're a bad... Well, sometimes you might, like, if they're doing something terrible in the moment. But, you know, they're people, and not. I don't think anybody's entirely good or evil. So there's got to be some goodness in them. Maybe another character brings that out. Maybe a situation brings that yeah. out. Or, like, maybe it's just, you know, they have different sides. Yeah. Like, like, there's also people that have, have been doing bad things because they've been brainwashed or taught one thing or one way, and then they, a little they while later, They get outside maybe, of that, yeah. Yeah, they get outside of it, and they realize, wow, I was a bad guy. I was fighting for the wrong team. You know, mm-hmm. like that crazy church the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, you God, yeah. Come, Don't get me crazy. started. Those are villains, yeah. yeah. right, to yeah. me. But a few of them have come out and realized how horribly brainwashed and, yeah. and evil they were being. Or, and like, they if turned around. If right? you've ever seen the, the movie Red, um, there's a guy who's working for the CIA, and you believe he's the bad guy because he's working against Bruce Willis' character, who's, like, you know, fighting the good fight. And then at the end, he kind of realizes, oh, the people I'm working for in the CIA are actually, like, the bad guys. I now see that you're not a problem, you're not a threat. And then he kind of switches sides. Mm -hmm. And even, like, bad guys who don't ever switch sides, like Regina, she still never, like, completely has switched sides yet. But she's not necessarily, like a villain anymore either, even though she started out as, like, the ultimate bad guy. Yeah, she's more sympathetic and... Yeah, sympathetic villains. <laughs> I love sympathetic yeah. villains. Yeah. Well, that actually, what Erica was saying makes me think of a bit of an older show, but Alias, she was actually the main character who Jennifer Garner played, was actually the bad guy in the beginning. She thought she was working for the CIA, but she wasn't. She was working for the villains, and then that's kind of where the, the plot took off. So there's so many different places you can go with. Mm-hmm. That there's no one set right or wrong, and each character is going to have a different mm-hmm. idea about what it is everyone should be working towards. And there's a lot you can play with with that. Yeah. Or Erica's novel. The main character is a demon who you would think would be the bad guy. That's true. I mean, it's like, yeah. I'm reading it right now. So. Oh, man. It's, a- <laughs> it's in no pressure. I'm going to make it's you in all my book jar. at some point. <laughs> Every time I go to pull it out, I'm like, come on, give me something good. <laughs> well, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's exciting, but like, a little terrifying. <laughs> Thank you for reading my book. <laughs> I read all of your work. <laughs> Everyone's work. I found them. <laughs> no pressure or anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we've got so, a few more questions. 
Um, <laughs> uh, I am me geek. This is the comment. She says she loves us so much. We love you too. Thank you for watching. Uh, Unresolved externals. Said sorry, I missed the beginning of the show. I got caught up in something on my way home. Don't worry about it. You're maybe watching now, you're or you'll watch now. later. It's not a problem. <laughs> Oceanic <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> Asks again, how many pages slash words is good for an average chapter? I always debate with myself on this and end up somewhere between six and 10,000 words. That might be on the high end of things. That's a bit long, That's yeah. a bit long for yeah. a chapter, yeah. I like short chapters. I, I love like short chapters. Yeah. 2,500 yeah. words is my average. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually heard from more than one agent that YA books should have a little bit shorter chapters because it keeps the pace going fast. Yeah. I love short chapters because what I do is when I sit down to read a book, I don't know how much time I have to actually read the book. So if the chapters are short, I'm more likely to keep reading. I'm like, oh, it's only five pages until the next chapter. Just and then it's like chapter. three in the morning yeah. and I finish the book. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. now that I love books that the chapters like end on like a cliffhanger or something. And I'm like, just one more chapter. And then mm -hmm. it's like, the whole book is... Yeah, I, I have this problem where I can't stop reading in the middle of a chapter. Like, if I have to do yeah. something or if I'm ready to go to sleep, I'm like, all right, I have to finish this chapter before I, I go to bed. It. So like, And if, if I the do, chapters... I usually don't pick it up again. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, like, and I really have time. No, those yeah. are usually about 250 words a page. So 10,000 words is 40 pages in a paperback. Mm -hmm. Or um, wow. a hardcover. So you definitely, it, it'd be really daunting to start. There are books out there that have 40 pages for a chapter. Yeah. But think about, like, your mentality of sitting down to read a young adult book, specifically. Yeah. Or a new adult book, or a middle grade book. 40 pages is a lot for that. You can usually break oh, up yeah. those long chapters, and you'll get more chapters. And then you'll be like, wow, I've written, like, 20 chapters. This is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I like to think of it by scene. I usually, yeah. I don't put more than two scenes in a chapter, usually. I think my oh, average even, is three or four, but they're generally small. Yeah. I don't even have chapters in my current work in progress yet. Like, I haven't added them yet, because I'm going to, like, does anyone else do that? Or do you yeah, I do that. In chapters as you, okay. Oh, see, I write as I go with the, the chapter. That's how I'm like, I oh, you yeah. finished the chapter. Scenes. Take a break. <laughs> I used to do that, but then I would, like, I'd be like, chapter 18, and i just keep writing, and then I'd be like, oh, there's never any chapter, just, <laughs> it just, I just forget it. A hundred pages <laughs> just of chapter them in later now. <laughs> See, my, I think one of the shortest chapters I have is in my novella, and that's, like, maybe 300 words, because it's, like, a really, really short chapter, <laughs> um, done on purpose to show, like, time and how disjointed it is, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I think around 2,000 to 5,000 is probably the sweet spot for most chapters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my goal is 3,000 per chapter. That's where I, that's where my ballpark I usually like to hit. Yeah. I'll usually be in eight pages. top one, like low 2,000, mid 2,000s, yeah. um, upper 1,000s, and my long one's around 35 to 38 if it's like pretty long. Yeah, I'm the same. I, I love short chapters. <laughs> yeah, but in the same sense, like, if you feel like it needs to be a long chapter, you don't have to push it. Like, it's okay to have chapters in varying lengths. Like, I know that there are yeah. some mm -hmm. writers who every chapter is, like, within this margin. Like, while I aim for 3,000, if I fall short, that's not necessarily a problem. Like, I don't add in, you know, fluffer to make it 3,000 words. Like, it's okay if there are different lengths throughout the book. Yeah. Worry about the story first. Mm -hmm. Chapters can always be compiled later. Yeah, exactly. Any more questions? Yep. Uh, this one's from Jenny. I think we're a little late in answering it, but uh, she, she'll probably watch this later, so we'll address it anyway. She's at school, so she'll probably be gone in four minutes. This was about seven minutes ago. Oops. Sorry, Jenny. Um, so which program do you use to plot? I try to find free plotting programs, but they usually don't work on my MacBook, and you often have to pay for them. Uh, Index the cards. Worksheets. You yeah. can buy them at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Index cards, notebooks. Yeah. I don't use any yeah. plotting. I don't I use a plotting program. Like, program. I mean, t technically you can say that I use Scrivener to plot, but for the most part, I have it plotted before I even dive into Scrivener, and yeah. it's index cards. And everything you do on Scrivener, and you can really do on paper. Um, exactly. There's nothing in particular. Yeah. What's that, like, I, bubbly one? 
to like connect scaffold. 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 That's from Does the that cost money? Scrivener. Scriven- Scriven- how much is it? It's like twenty bucks or something. Yeah, it's, cheap. it's cheaper than Scrivener is. I've seen another one like that as well, though. I think it's yeah. free. So that, one that, I don't. I, I will never be able to use called... that. I use yeah. the trial on it, and just the way that it's set up, like my brain just doesn't function that way. Yeah. <laughs> so that that app just doesn't work for me. I'll stick with Scrivener and my index cards. I've yeah. played with one that's called Hive Word, um, and that's a lot of fun because it like divvies it all up for you, and it does similar things to Scrivener, but it like gears it more towards making sure that you have like overarching plots and subplots, and so you can like add scene cards and like select which plot it's going with so you can kind of see like all of the development and it's free and it's all online so I like that hive word like beehive hive word hive ward yeah see I've never used a plotting program I just don't know if I could it seems too structured for me and I worked much better like the Mm -hmm. book I plotted for a full series of five books I just opened a pages document or like a Microsoft Word and just kind of bullet points. I was like, book yeah. one, title, yeah. what's going to happen? That's my favorite. Brand. What's going to happen? <laughs> and I, you know, you can put that in note cards if you're more visual, or you can draw like diagrams or the little cloud thingies with, you know, branches. Mm-hmm. Word well, map you know, that is saying, what I'm being told mm-hmm. it's called. Thank you. <laughs> I end up sometimes writing a basically a synopsis. Like it's not as neat or structured as a synopsis, but like later, like before I had an agent when I was querying, that's what I did, and it ended up being really handy because some agents, not a lot of agents, ask you for a synopsis anyways. So yeah. I just tidied that up and sent it along, which is good because I hate writing synopsis. They're the worst. So. Oh, they're awful. They're worse than query letters or summaries. They're terrible. (laughs) Terrible. And I think it's fun, too, to, while you're trying to do plotting, which is sometimes messy and sometimes not fun, I like to keep, like, another notebook or another piece of paper next to it. And I always call it flashes because I'm really, like, image-based, I think, like Erica said. So, like, I'll see, like, this one thing, and I'll be like, oh, I need that in a scene. So I might write down, like, dancing on the deck while the boat sinks or something. And um, I'll be like, okay, I want that in there somewhere. It's going to be in there somewhere. And so I'll put, like, those images while I'm trying to plot. I I think I'm like Kaylin as well. I get little blips of dialogue, like, for the romance in the one I have now. Like, I, like lines would pop into my head. I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool if he said that, and then she said that back to him. And then so I just have, like, weird little blips That's of what I have. like, yep. post-it notes all over, like, <laughs> no, I have I notebooks was... full of it. I had yeah. a bulletin well, board and, and inspiration like, and quotes and stuff. Be like, this is the yeah, thing I want to get across. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, and a picture. Like, I have a picture of, like, this really awesome Japanese castle that my grandpa actually went there and took a picture of it. And I'm like, That's I'm so going to put this in there. Yeah, just, like, cool stuff like <laughs> That's that. That's why I use Pinterest. That's, like, the only way. Yeah, to- I was just going to say yeah. that I'm actually going to do a video. Uh, a vlog on Pinterest uh, on the next time I have Logger's Choice or um, Inspiration Corner or something like that. And going along with something else that we were talking about earlier is how we always get sidetracked with the internet. I learned a very small kind of cheat is like after I'm always already like um, doing non-writing related uh, um, social networking and stuff like that. Like I'll go on Tumblr and I'll specifically like search for like writing hashtags. Or I'll go on Pinterest and look for like writing hashtags and like read about mm-hmm. other people's processes and their inspiration, and then that gets kind of... productive. Right, it kind of gets my gears moving. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. even if you're stuck, like, Pinterest, just searching for inspirational images, anything, like, like my novel is about aliens, so I will type in just aliens, I will will look up any type of, like, abduction, like, story or anything, and I'll just read and get that visual of um, what I want Mm -hmm. my story to be, and then eventually you'll start picking up seeds from there. That's, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I did. I was having trouble starting writing um, a short story I'm writing for the anthology, and I was like, I knew the concept, I just couldn't get the inspiration to start actually writing it, so I was like, I'll make a Pinterest board, and I just started mm-hmm. pinning a bunch of pictures of people drowning, because someone drowns in my story, and oh I'm like, God. I swear I'm not a weirdo. Wow. That is so it's like my the artistic fear word. of my entire life. I will oh, well, be staying away really from that story. board. <laughs> no, you <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's a lot of the imagery of oceans and, like, dresses going, yep. like, nope, nothing. 
<laughs> but see, like, when you're writing, if you're writing a story like that, the looking at it no, can really yeah. like be getting, evocative of getting in that mindset of like this person is drowning. Oh. Yeah, that's actually, like you can that, picture yeah. it, mm-hmm. but you know, picturing it in your head can only yeah. go so far at times. Right. I heard it's the most yeah. way to go, Kayla, and it's okay. <laughs> it's the what? No, I think being frozen no, is the best the way to go. Most peaceful way to go. Frozen? No so way. Like, you know, freezing to death. You just get really cold <laughs> and then tired and fall asleep and die. I feel like that's a great way oh, to die. That's so no, nice. First, that sounds terrible. First, you like lose your faculty though, so <laughs> and you think that the thing that makes the most sense is to take off your clothes and like bury you yourself. Feel you feel hot. <laughs> no, you feel hot yeah. at one point because your yeah. body's so messed I up. I still feel like that's You're a just great found way. Naked? No. Robert Frost Holmes Fire and Ice makes no sense to me because it's like obviously ice is the best way to go. No. Ice would oh, suffice. Oh, fire would, would be, be nice. Ugh. Fire would be yeah. nice. But drowning is no. up there for me. Like the burning in your lungs, like that. Yeah, no mine's way. just being hung. I, just I don't, don't like, want to know what's coming. I don't like. I don't <laughs> yeah. like the idea of being hung. <laughs> Get away from me. Really, I love it. Love the idea. I love that. It sounds like fun. I don't like the idea. Really? (laughs) Like, number one is being hung. Stab me first. Just stab, like, kill me any other way. Just don't hang me. Any other way. Literally. (laughs) Literally any other way. (laughs) Like, What about beheading? That would be fast. I feel like that'd be better than being hung. (laughs) This yeah. is taking a strangely morbid situation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Our views are going to start, like, plummeting. Speaking of <laughs> uh, this is from Caitlin. I hope I'm saying that right. Can you ever use too much description? Yes. 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 Definitely. <laughs> Especially when it comes to certain topics, like maybe things yeah. that are too morbid or graphic. <laughs> yeah. Or really, my, my big snooze fest is setting. Like, the over-descriptive yeah. setting and what's the weather and stuff like that. Like, I know that that's a big thing that people do for NaNo is to meet that word goal. They'll describe everything on the desk that the person's sitting at. Um, and that's fine that's if you want to meet. Why? Just, no. to get, just to get the words yeah. to meet the deadline to, all about to win NaNo. Count. It's all about the word count. <laughs> Not necessarily. And the while I think it's okay for no, that because it is just a team. writing exercise. Mm. Um but when you're going with a finished product, like you, I don't need to know everything that's on the desk. I don't need to know every poster that's on the wall yeah. and stuff like that. It's it, it can be overbearing. Yeah. I actually struggle with the opposite problem, like especially like in my first draft now, it's really rough, and the settings are so like I barely described any of it except for like you know a couple dollops of description here and there. But then <laughs> there's like I will have to go back and flesh out my description because I'm just like yeah, I don't care. Like, I really need to go back and, and add in the surroundings and stuff. So, yeah, you can have too much of it, or you can have You can also have too little. Yeah, mm-hmm. it definitely yeah. depends on what you're describing and, like, if it's important to the plot. Like, if setting plays yeah. a large part, like, Hogwarts has described a lot of different ways, and why do I keep bringing up Harry Potter? Um, Stop it, you guys. Because it's in the back of your head. You, it's there. It's a great part. But, you know, Hogwarts is explained a lot in detail, and... Not necessarily all at once. I think that's the key. Information yeah, dump is a problem. Out. Yeah. But it's also Hogwarts is almost also another character in the book. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. That's, that's true. Setting, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a plot is becomes. Yeah, character. becomes another huge part, like almost like a character, or the atmosphere is such a huge part of. The Which book. is why it's not a burden to read all of those descriptions yeah. because you're like moving staircases. Yeah, and awesome. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah. I want to yeah. read more about it. Exactly. So. Ooh. One more Harry Potter. Do we have any more? Okay, we're done talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> it's a dangerous yeah. subject. I think we're good on questions on YouTube. Did you have any more, Aaron? I do. Hold on. Ah, <laughs> uh, my phone's dying. Oh. <sighs> In Candy Cat, yes, Wattpad does have giant pages, so what shows up as one or two pages on Wattpad is definitely not one or two pages in a paperback, yeah. especially considering yeah. formatting. So don't yeah. be fooled or, you know, discouraged by, like, two pages on Wattpad because it's going to be a lot more in Wattpad a book. Wattpad drives me crazy because I'll write, like, eight pages, and then it's like, you have four pages. I'm like, no. <laughs> I worked so, so hard, hard on this. <laughs> yes. I'd rather them show it in like one giant page, like they used to do on fan fiction. Yeah, like they fan still do that. And stuff. They do. They I do still so. do that. Okay, uh, <laughs> My sister's giving me the 
vigorous nodding. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even that's better. Okay, dear word nerds, what do you do if you feel like you have the full plot in your head, but then when you try to write it down, it's mush? No idea if that makes sense. It's mush. The first thing oh, I so like you have a really great idea and it just comes out like... <laughs> 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 Maybe oh, we make it the plot. <laughs> um, I don't know. I would never try to have a full plot in my head and just write it. Like, I have to write it down or I, or I forget things. So... Mm -hmm. Does anyone else just pant? That's basically pantsing it. Just yeah. like sitting I, down. Yeah. I have pantsed before. And I think the best thing is just to un like get a feel for, better understand when you should call an idea quits. Um, sometimes an idea is just total garbage and there's nothing that can be done at this point to salvage it. Trunk and it. so, yeah, those are the times that you put it in your desk drawer and you just don't look at it for a year or two. And then you can pull it out and revisit it. Um, but if it is that you're panting it, it could be that you've gotten to a point where you need to plot a little bit. You painted um, yourself in a corner. Yeah, you need to go back <laughs> and look out. at what you've done and find a way to get out and find a way to make it interesting and just think also, ahead on paper. Yeah, also if you're naturally, if you're maybe pantsing it in your natural plotter, which is what I did, like, before I figured out really what worked best for me, is when you come into a lot of problems like that. Like, you get stuck, and you get writer's block, and, like, there's, like, a billion different problems that you can run into, just because maybe you're trying to put yourself into the wrong box. Right? Yeah, like, and like she said, it might be the opposite, too. Like, when I tried to plot Ignite, I just was, like, stuck, and I'm like, I can't write this. It's not yeah. going anywhere, so I had to kind of throw out the strict plot I had, and I felt like I could do, do more, which is pantsing. Yeah. So if you're better yeah. at pantsing or plotting, don't force yourself to be one because you mm -hmm. think the other's better. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty well, of the well, writing process. With, yeah. <laughs> do what works for exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same with first person or third person. Maybe mm -hmm. you absolutely suck at third person and you're awesome at first person, but you feel third person is more literary. <laughs> You can't yeah. cram yourself into the literary box if you're more natural at first person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that goes for any yeah. thing. I yeah. would love to be able to write in third person, but it just it does not come out very well at all. I used to be really bad at it because I would get confused and then switch mm -hmm. like halfway through. I'm like, wait, what verbs or like pronouns or nouns do I use here? I'm confused, but I'm actually practice. If you know, practice on. Um, other stories that you're not really invested in, like, publishing one day or putting out in the world. Because it is useful to kind of be able to jump back and forth in different point of views or, Definitely. you know, mm -hmm. because some stories might require, like, it sounds better in first person yeah. or it sounds better in third. You might have to switch it. Yeah. You don't want to be actually, writing the same a, thing all the time. Yeah. Actually, that's a question that I want to ask you guys if, if you think, like, so there's there's always people saying, you know, oh, it might sound better in first person or it might sound better in third. Do you guys think that a certain type sounds better in third than it does in first? Or I, cause if I think it really question, depends. I, I think it really depends on the writing style. Kelly and I actually worked on a book this past fall where um, the story was originally written in third person, I believe, and it just sounded too detached from the story, and we suggested trying first person present. Um, because I think it was third person past and it just like we weren't able to connect with the characters and we found that the problem did stem from the point of view and not the writing necessarily. So um, she but it went was back also and the voice then, right? Yeah. It was like, it was a problem with the voice. Yeah, because I would never know if, you know, like I've had people say like, Oh, I don't connect with the voice and then so mm -hmm. I don't know like is that just my voice or is it because it, I'm writing in third? That's yeah, sometimes it's writing. always useful to try, like, if you're getting that feedback, it's useful to try writing a chapter in a different point of view or different yeah. tense to see if it is just your voice or if it is, the st like, the point of view. Because that would be a very yeah. stupid reason for someone to not connect and you could, like, you know, easily, well, not easily, but it's something that you could not change easily. and <laughs> make your yeah, book stronger that way. Yeah, that's true. 
But boy, she must have loved you when you told her to change it. Oh no! <laughs> it, was, it was like we are so sorry about this, but can we try doing it in a different? Time? And I think she was getting the same feedback from beta readers as well. So it wasn't just coming from us, but yeah. But that's a yeah, hard critique cry. to hear. You're like, oh, I gotta. Yeah. Rewrite everything. Oh, yeah. Change the entire Not let anything thing, yeah. slip through. That was the... Yeah. Ooh, it's a tough um, edit to make, but... I'd be sorely tempted oh, to yeah. start drinking. We do, have an, yes. we do have another question on YouTube from OK Theism. Um, have you guys discussed the W plot? That's the method I like best so far. And I actually pulled this up because I wasn't sure what the W plot was. <laughs> so for those no, who don't, don't know... know the W plot is, I'm going to point with my nose. Wait, which way are we going? <laughs> this way. Other okay. Way. So from here up is act one. This is the trigger event. This is setting up the problem. This is the first turning point. <laughs> then you have recovering from the problem. Second triggering event, event in act two. Uh, <laughs> deepening the problem. Second turning point. <laughs> resolving the problem. And the resolution in Act Three. That no, was that's, really that's, well done. I feel yeah, pretty much a beat sheet. Yeah, can, can you do that again for me? Yeah, yeah here we go. Sure <laughs> trigger. First turning point. Second trigger. Second turning point. Resolution. <laughs> that sounds a lot like my beat sheet too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and three act. Three act structure. Mm -hmm. Megan did a whole video on mm, the three act structure, which is so find that in our Word Nerd archive and. Yeah, I don't reference to it yeah. as W. <laughs> no. But it's basically, it's a three-act structure. It's just, yeah. they should it as a W In to remember. In a fun it. shape. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I know, it's a loser, loser, double loser, as if, whatever. <laughs> Get the picture, no. Oh, oh my Oh, goodness. thank God it wasn't just me. <laughs> no, I <laughs> know that, right? It's both of us. It's fine. Yes. You got that. Back. Back in high school. Awesome. Good times. <laughs> Uh, any more questions? <laughs> yep. Yes. I am me geek. Is it better to work on one book or more than one so you don't forget specific things on the other book? I'm not sure if this is talking about writing multiple series at the same time. I'm going to assume that's yeah. What it yeah. Is. I have tried writing multiple series yeah. at the same time. I'd recommend if you're going to write multiple series at the same time, write it between writing a full book. Like, you can't write two books at the same time, but you can write one, then take a break from the series, write a different one, and yeah. then write the next sequel from the first one. Mm -hmm. I actually but. had to, like, for a while with Wattpad, because I was writing, I had promised people that I was going to write a certain book, but then I was also trying to write other books to send to my agent, so I was writing, like, two or three books at the same time, and my brain was ready to explode, so I had to actually tell people on Wattpad, like, okay, this is the posting schedule, I'm not posting this book until February 1st, or whatever, right, so, like, this is a time where my other novel is just sitting in the drawer, and I'm not touching it, so now I can yeah. write something else, and then next yeah. month, the Wattpad books are done, and I can start on something else. Because I just, like, if I have too many projects, I start mixing up names and voice. plot lines yeah. and mm -hmm. voice. Yeah. yeah cause one is in third and one is in first. Especially since so most of your books should yeah. probably have a different feel to them. So, like, oh, yeah. if you're working on yeah. two series, they should not feel like, oh, it's, like, in the same vein. Unless it's, like, yeah. like the mortal instruments and the infernal devices. Um, but for the most part, you want them to be very distinct and different. And sometimes it will start to kind of mold together if you're working yeah. on it at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's not to say that you can never, like, if you're working on one thing, you can't ever work on something that's not that. You can, if just, like, the words are not coming with that particular piece. You can write a chapter for, like, a shiny new idea. But <laughs> if you're going to be committing, <laughs> you want to finish no. something... <laughs> Then you yeah. need to be doing just the one. And shiny new idea <laughs> syndrome is like a oh problem. My, my recommendation yes. is once you get that idea, write it down. And if you have and a plot, it. summary, or outline, write that down quickly and then stow it. Forget about it. I have <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll it's still be there. there. Yes. <laughs> just, just take your notes while it's yeah. fresh in your mind so you don't forget it. And you'll see it later and be like, this is a great idea. Let me write it. Or yeah. you'd be like, what? I, that might have for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. If I chased after all my shiny new ideas, I would have like 62 billion unfinished manuscripts and like nothing <laughs> actually finished. 
Mm-hmm. Always pops up in the middle of something. Yeah. Especially yeah. like the oh, middle of the relationship. So. My husband's downstairs screaming, and I'm like, wait, are you watching football, or did something happen? He's like, oh, it's football. <laughs> <laughs> are you being stabbed, or... <laughs> I know. Oh, dear. I'm coming to save you, Kaylin. I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> We've got another question. This one's from Shannon. Uh, how can you work on realistic dialogue? I have trouble making it sound right. Read it out loud is a mm. suggestion. You'll feel what sounds like really weird when you say it out loud. You're like, that's forced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of you have to say it out loud, but not as you're reading it to someone. Kind of say it out loud in the same vein as the character is. That's the way it works for me. Um, yeah. Or even if you don't yeah. want to say it out loud, out loud, like say it out loud in your head. Mm-hmm. You know, like li- like if you imagine someone else saying this, and if you'd be like, that's a like awkward wording or too yeah, formal. Yeah. That's usually the problem is people go too formal in their dialogue yeah, because exactly. it's literature yeah. and you're writing, you know, really well. But yeah, and I found one thing um, yeah. Veronica Roth did, like, she didn't use, um, and I'm totally spacing on the grammar word here, but instead of saying don't, it was do not. Contractions. No, oh, contractions. Yeah. contractions. She, she never used contractions. contractions. Like, she really? did, she did a little bit, but I know really? it stuck yeah. out to me a little bit. It to where I know when Tris me, talks, because that drives me batshit, frankly. Yeah. When people don't use <laughs> oh yeah, because like, that's not how See, people talk. The one yeah. thing that drove me a little bananas it was, especially in Allegiant, I noticed it like a lot. After every single bit of dialogue, it was he says, she says. Oh. It's like you know, it it is something that people give advice of like you know you read right over that because it's just says but it drove me crazy no, it was like every over and over. single yeah. one yeah. and I was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like whisper something or yell something like they're yelling at each other and it's like mm-hmm. he says I'm like no <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. well I like I try to like I I try not to put like oh he murmured or she screamed like too much although I occasionally do but I like it I would have liked it better instead of he said she said he said she said if there's yeah. just been like actions I'd rather be yeah, yeah. description yeah. yeah. or, or nothing like, yeah or nothing there at all yeah. as long as if there's just two people speak, speaking it should be yeah, very yeah. straightforward yeah it it's when yeah. there's like multiple people yeah. that you might want to use tags. Yeah. Yeah. It's Actually, usually... that's hilarious because my video for this week is going to be on that. I already have it all written out. Oh, <laughs> rant. Yeah. I think we. I think um, we mentioned it before with uh, Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Yeah. Is that there are points Eight. in there where yeah. there's like two Straight entire out. pages, like back to back, where Without just me. dialogue. There's very very minimal no discussion. Tags, like... No tags or anything, but it's between two people, so it's easy to follow. Is it done um, well? Because I know it's, sometimes I feel like it's done well. Yeah, I feel oh, like okay, it's good. done well. So it's I think it's a good way to practice voice. Yeah. 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 If it's if it's not done well, then you can get mixed up and forget who is speaking. But yep. if it's done well, you should be able to tell just by reading their dialogue. Whose voice it is. Whose voice right, it exactly. Is. Yeah. Your character shouldn't problem, sound the same. My yeah. main problem is if there is like a large chunk of dialogue, it seems like there's no action happening. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's a note I'll usually true. get from Kelly. It's like, they're just talking this entire scene. Do mm-hmm. something. <laughs> Ooh, I think you yeah, can get away with it more in contemporary, which is what Aristotle yeah. and Dante mm-hmm. is. It's a contemporary. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, you can get away with it there, if it's, especially if it's more literary. You have this, like, purple thing over your head. Me? No, yeah. Aaron. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm just so fascinated by it any time you're talking about like, forgetting to move the camera. <laughs> I, it might be a light. Is it, like, the glow from a light? Oh, what just happened? Or you're about oh, to your hair. Doctor. It's I'm about to be abducted. Oh, <laughs> Kayla and I will report funny. back to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's from my hair. Excruciating. Yeah, it's it's light. I think it's the light reflecting off of the purple in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. When you move. I don't well, know. She just moves and I saw no. it again. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. I thought I solved it. I'm I so didn't. purple, it's reflecting off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to change it. There. It's oh, awesome. There I like it. We, we have a oh, bunch sorry, of I just questions. took it. I just took it away from you. <laughs> How could you do this to me? Sorry. <laughs> Actually, I'm crooked now. There, you can have the light back. 
<laughs> okay, we have a few new a questions. Ethereal look. A bunch of new questions. I'm that's you. On YouTube, uh, this one's from Megan. Is it easier to plot on paper or on the computer? <laughs> Her face. Megan from the future. <laughs> or the past. From the past. On paper or the computer? Is that what she said? Yeah, yeah, it's always going to be personal preference. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, personal yeah. preference. I prefer paper. I prefer paper. paper. I think Notebook. it's easier to plot on the computer because you can move stuff around and change things, whereas... So that's, you know, it's personal I preference. Like yeah. My I like to start usually, on paper. I usually have, like, it's usually, for me, it's not, like, the whole story just pops into my head. It's, like, a random, like, uh, scene or a setting or a character. So I scribble that down in a notebook, and then if it starts building on itself, then I'll put it on flashcards. Yeah, I'll write in a notebook. That's what I plot mostly, um, my plotting. I But my suggestion is to, I write in spiral notebooks because the Marvel notebooks or, like, the fancy nice ones, I get too intimidated to write in it because I'm like, I know I'm going to be tearing pages out. I don't want to ruin it. I got so I, a whole stack of <laughs> Marvel notebooks. Ooh. Oh, man, I applaud your bravery. I get so <laughs> intimidated by them because you rip a page out and then a page falls out from oh, the back. Dude, my it's pages so are awesome. torn out, stapled in, glued in. I dropped one in water, so it has this really cool blue design on it. Like they're they're broken. They're so broken. Um, so yeah, it definitely depends on on how you like to plot. If you're if you're using a program or a worksheet, like you can print out the worksheets. Programs, obviously, you have to go on the computer and be digital about it. But if you're plotting on the computer, make sure to back it up. Yeah, back up your work because. Yeah, if you lose it's your plot, it's just the worst feeling. You will back cry. it up on the computer, back it up you on an internet-based back yeah. it up thing. Back it up Magic. everywhere. Multiple times. Sometimes back emailing it to cry. yourself helps. I always email stuff to myself. Print it out if you're... After I'm Megan, lucky. After Megan, I'm petrified of losing my... Learn from me. Email. I lost a couple of chapters <laughs> on a book I'm yeah. working on because... Like right after. After. Yeah, I thought right I backed afterwards. it up. Right after oh, she it's the worst it. feeling. Yeah. Even, like I know uh, what the good thing about Scrivener is that it auto saves like after so many like seconds of an activity. Yeah, it's but, like, only like two seconds. But well, also a bad thing about Scrivener, if you delete one of the chapters, you can't undo it. Yeah, like if you, Learn that if you the hard empty way. the trash, yeah, you can't Dude. undo the trash. Oh. It was bad. Because, like I thought the same thing for my like I just do it on Microsoft Word and I didn't realize that I actually had the auto save on. And it ate an entire... I don't know. Oh, an entire... <laughs> it ate an entire air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're going to... Um, mystery girl kind of wants to talk about Harry Potter. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, do we want to... We have one, like, a few quick questions that I think we could just get real out of the way, and then okay. we'll be Harry Potter Central. Is that just, is the re not for too long because we've been going almost <laughs> two hours. So, um, Okatheism wanted to say real quick that the plot for the W is the ups and downs of emotion in the story. So that's emotion, rest, and then exciting, and then. Um, Taylor said, "I've been recovering from new shiny idea syndrome. First step is to realize you have a problem." And then so true. JK Reader said, how do you tell the difference between what you think is amazing writing and what the reader, what has the reader falling asleep at their keyboards? Beta readers. Beta readers. Beta readers. Beta readers. Beta readers. Yeah. And I, I think it's time for Harry Potter now. So strap in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 See, I was, it was such a good day yesterday and I'm giving my daughter a bath and I come downstairs to all these notifications and I'm like, oh, I'm popular now. So I'm reading and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> what is going on? Erica, you want to read up. Mystery Girl's comment so anyone who doesn't yeah. know what's going on? Uh, Mystery Girl said about the love thing in Harry Potter, Ron and Hermione didn't fall in love right away. Quick fact, apparently J.K. Rowling thought their relationship was a mistake. She goes on in the interview to say basically she thought that Ron and Hermione's relationship was more of a wish fulfillment than something that would have actually happened. She said she should have written Hermione with Harry. I'm mad about that. She also oh. said she really considered killing Ron. Now, I knew again, that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew that I, too. I knew that one. Yeah. I knew that this is just I'm glad it. she didn't. <laughs> yeah. This is just an excerpt from the interview. The interview won't be out until the Wonderland magazine is out 
maybe it'll be better in context, but I feel like really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like, they yeah. were, they were like, like, look, love exists. Like, exactly, they, and that was, I, I, I had a rant on Twitter about it uh, last night, and my daughter is apparently really upset about it too, if you can hear her <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> but it's I'm like, too. Yeah. I mean, I just, I guess I didn't like the way that it was written in that article. Maybe when that actual interview comes out, it might shed a different light to it. Um, but I do agree with John Green. Um, his, you know, post yeah. on Twitter was that books belong to the readers. Okay. And yeah. while I do agree with that, it, it's just the way that she said it was like, oh, you know, uh, you know, they Hermione and Harry. Therapy. Yeah, because yeah. Ron and that Hermione really couple therapy. Upset. Like, <laughs> like that makes me really upset. Like Harry's gonna need like, therapy for the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Harry's gonna be way more messed up than Ron and Hermione are. Like, and I feel like yeah, like, Ron and Hermione balance Voldemort. each other. They balance they were, they what said, Ron lacked, yeah, Hermione like, had, and vice versa. And I love like, that they didn't. It wasn't insta love. Like they grew together, and that's kind of like I experienced that myself. Like when I first met my husband in high school, we we weren't friends. Like we didn't really like each other that much, and then eventually. <laughs> We got set up by a mutual friends, and we hit it off from there. And, um, you know, people look at us, and they, you, I wouldn't classify us as soulmates because we're very different people, but the love that we have for each other over, you know, it trumps any differences that we have. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that, to me, is kind of the same path that they take. The, you know, Ron and Hermione are two very different people, but I think that they, they grew together through exactly. everything that they've been through yeah. and to and say I literally... that they don't that they don't belong together because they don't they aren't compatible. It's like yeah. that's like a slap in the face. I and I <laughs> Anybody's put it on not Twitter. mutually compatible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like nothing that she says will change their relationship for me, but it's still it feels like JK Rowling dumped that's me and left me crying in the parking lot. Right? Like yeah. Yeah. mascara. And like, I feel like, like I felt terrible. For Hermione with Harry. Like I can't picture that. Yeah, that would have been a very different no. story. And I liked yeah. that it didn't yeah. follow the traditional route of the main girl. Hero called. gets the girl. Yeah. 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 No way. It would have been honestly, such a different like, story. Yeah, they remind me so much of the older Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. I feel like their relationship yeah, right. is parallel. So, they, you know, they yeah, bicker, absolutely. they fight, but they love each other at the end. It's just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> to, like, if you're gonna say that you don't think she should have been with Ron... Why Harry? He's no smarter than Ron. Yeah, they have the exactly. same grade. This <laughs> actually, this Why brings, Harry and not someone I think, else? This brings me to the root of my issue with it is Ron, time and time again, is always given like the short end of the stick. You know, he's not yes. as good as his brothers or as smart as them or as funny as and the twins. He, or and then his you know. creator did it to yeah, him too. Yeah, exactly. He's so given sad. all over. <laughs> he's not as impressive as Harry Potter. He's not as smart as Hermione. He's not as great at Quidditch, and, you know, he's kind of, he's just kind of floating on by, not noticed, and then Hermione notices him, and, like, mm -hmm. that yeah. was, he, he lived up to, like, this hero potential. I still remember the movie, and he's like, not my girlfriend, you numped in. I right know, I love her, that. Like, and, and then to, like, say that, oh, I wouldn't have given him that happy ending that I feel like he deserved, and he fought yes. for really hard. Absolutely. Like, crushed that's a lot of yeah. soul. That's everyone who, who agreed with it automatically paired Harry with Hermione, and I don't agree with that they pairing were, either. Yeah. And no, but then no. again, I don't really agree with Harry and Ginny together either. No. I don't. I've never felt like they, they are my they, favorite. That seemed, yeah, that seemed random to me. So, so Harry weird. Potter, me, forever alone. I, I, <laughs> I really <laughs> thought he should have been alone at the end. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, or, I or you know, just because you're alone at the end of high school doesn't just like yeah. doesn't mean yeah. Yeah. Have have to be alone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. even have to end up with someone from Hogwarts. I mean, he right. should have yeah. married a Muggle. Yeah. He, it yeah. <sighs> yeah, exactly. And actually, but with the thing that really annoyed me is because, like, with Harry and or with Ron and Hermione, it's not like it happened out of nowhere. Like, I saw it coming, right? Like in the first couple books, like mm -hmm. he's bumbling and he's silly and right. he doesn't really know how to act around girls. And like she's being like that girl up. who's like, "Don't do that." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he ends up crushing. <laughs> he crushing on Hermione, obviously. Yeah. He doesn't you know? So it's like. And I like, like that they didn't. I love one. that. Yeah. And I like that they, then, they didn't like yeah. each other, and they didn't fall yeah. in love. Like, yeah. his first, like, real yeah. girlfriend was not Hermione. 
and she had to watch him Laughing. kind of yeah, yeah fall in love with Snarky. somebody else and she my favorite her part one, one. Out. but then you know at the and end he she watched her with crumb yeah too and yeah. and at the end he didn't really hate crumb crumb was like an idol to her and or to him he was an autist but and then Hermione yeah. didn't end up hating lavender. Like she, she didn't. She wasn't like you stole Ron from me for that period of time. Like mm-hmm. in the last book when she's being killed, she like fights them off because that's. Uh, you like so your many feelings. <laughs> it's just they were, they made sense. And to say that she had to force it to make sense makes me really sad because I felt like it was a natural progression between them. I and I feel like too. forcing I, it would be putting her with Harry. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 The status yeah. quo. And then, you know, going yeah. on from that, like, in that discussion, people start talking about, I don't know if anyone is a fan of the show, How I Met Your Mother, yeah, but basically it. the whole show is, you know, talking about How I Met Your Mother, and mm-hmm. you're left wondering, who exactly is the mother? Mm-hmm. And I, I read about something. Somebody said that the writers of the show kind of regret not having one of the main characters be the mother. At no, the I'm glad that it wasn't. And I I'm absolutely hate not. that idea. Like, I yeah. love that it's someone we haven't met yet, And but by them coming out and saying that, it kind of makes yeah. me not believe in yeah. anything that they've written so far. Like, you don't... As a creator, you shouldn't double-guess yourself, and even if you do, yeah. like, you don't necessarily make that a public knowledge. Or like, you don't say specifically, exactly. I would change this entirely. You could say, yeah. I wish I'd better yeah. explored this, or I wish that I'd given this character more of a voice, or more screen time, you know, on the page. Or, or like, I would have been interested to see what would happen. Yeah, I, if right. if I played this out. Okay, okay. Guys, we have a comment from Emma, so we're gonna let her jump in here. Emma! Emma. <laughs> Is anyone else wondering if the movie's portrayal of Ron and of Harry and Hermione's I relationship... Think so. Maybe, but I love. See, I loved movie hair or movie Ron and Hermione. I think they made Mm -hmm. it even like more convincing for me. I did not like movie Ginny. Can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah. movie Ginny was so poorly represented compared to book Ginny, who kicked some ass. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, for real. I do think though that. You see more of like that Daniel Emma chemistry earlier on. But I saw them more like, like as actors. Always. But like, I think like that brother like, sister. Even when they were trying to destroy the to destroy the Horcrux, and then we see that glimpse of Emma and Dan kissing, it still didn't it's feel still, like yeah. that should have been the way it was. I don't yeah. get that feeling at all. Exactly. Yeah. Like, or when they were dancing together, it always yeah, felt I love like it that felt scene. wrong. Like I love that scene, friends. but it also yeah, it it didn't it have awkward. that romantic feel to it. No, that was weird. I to loved me. it because I felt it like it was like he's her friend and he's helping exactly. her because right. she's sad and brokenhearted. Yeah, because Ron is gone. Yeah, and he's not gonna try and kiss her at the end because he's her friend. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting comments about uh, book BFS loves how passionate we are about this. Yeah, we just have to one. Just chat. Just you don't. You don't mess with Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah, that's my. Uh, like, that's my so blood. Just, Says if oh Harry ended up with Hermione, then him and Ron wouldn't have been friends anymore. Hmm. No, I I don't think that's their a relationship. Yeah, it's a possibility. I mean, I <laughs> they're such close friends. I would like to believe that they like. I think Ron might be quietly destroyed. Yeah, but think destroyed. about how jealous Ron was of Harry half the time. Can In general, if yeah. His, if he took yeah. his girl as well, on top of being like the awesome hero and everything else, it, yeah, it would probably be too girl, much. That Ron liked would that be enough for, like to like make him snap and be like I never want to talk to you again. But the that way I depends on how deep their friendship really ran. Like the way I took yeah. what she said though is that she would have changed the whole thing. She wouldn't have just made right, it yeah. seven. Who yeah. ends up different? Yeah. Ron wouldn't have had that same relationship with. So it's so impossible. And that's yeah. so upsetting to me. Yeah, it would have yeah. been an entire yeah, relationship that idea. was so I well done. It. Oh. But the thing is, like, it wouldn't have worked out to me because then Harry would have been, like, the one and everything, and then he also would have had Hermione, and then Ron would have just been, like, a tag-along. Yeah, he's just deal. a sidekick yeah. only. Like, no redemption yeah, from like, him. And I like that no. everyone ended up as part of the Weasley family, and that wouldn't have I happened. Li- yeah, I that do love that. My mom... My mom's big thing is that Harry was like officially like a Weasley, and that he probably has his face on this one of the spoons on the clocks. Yeah. On their clock. <laughs> That's my mom's big thing. And I'm like, I do agree with that though. I do yeah, like, like that. Um, the idea of him. Being I don't necessarily there. like him and Ginny. 
Yeah. yeah. I like him that. having a family, though, so I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take it yeah. where, where it's yeah. due. I know that a lot of people were not okay with the like epilogue of it, but I think they could have just, like, she could have just incorporated it that, that Harry and Ginny were maybe just, like, dating or something afterwards instead of having, like, ten years later, they're married with kids or whatever, right? Like, yeah. did anyone not like the epilogue? I, I don't know, I definitely it. cried when I read it, so I'm going to yeah, say first yeah. brush. I, I liked it. Yeah. yeah. I felt like it was too clean of an ending for yes, Harry. Sweet. Yeah, I felt like it was I too clean. It, yeah. I and liked it, the but kids, it was so clean. The kids' names were like, come on. Really? Oh, I, I know it's the Wizarding I'm World and everything. Child, I know come which on. child's going to get shoved into Myrtle Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, so, I'm very upset about the whole Albus Severus Potter thing, yeah. because really, they're the two bravest people you know. I've yeah. got some flaw- I love Severus Snape, but he has a lot of flaws that everybody yeah, right. is so willing to <laughs> me, overlook. Well, m- me and my husband yeah. get on Snape all the time. Like, he is a Snape apologist, and yeah. I <laughs> am not. <laughs> so we were actually arguing about it earlier today. And I'm like, I mean, don't, the, don't. the only reason he stopped being a Death Eater was because Lily was in trouble. Lily died. Yeah, like, I mean, like, yeah. she was dead. He wouldn't have stopped if she, she wasn't in trouble. She had asked him to stop. She's like, and he's like, no. I <laughs> like it. And I'm not a kidding people. Yeah. And, I mean, That's the true. fact that he was Neville's greatest fear really exactly. says a lot. Exactly. I mean, that alone mm-hmm. was just like. Where's see? Neville Potter? What yeah. the freak? I mean, yeah. there's yeah. so many other I'm people kidding. he could draw from who are, like, so brave. McGonagall, right? Yeah, loved her. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't Love. necessarily name your son after. Yeah, her. Yeah, it, Minerva's not really a boy's name. <laughs> Maybe yeah, <it's> Minerva. <laughs> well, also the yeah. fact that the only reason that Snape was motivated to even change sides is because of even if it's Harry's mother, a woman. It wasn't exactly. because he thought, "Hey, maybe I should stop butchering innocent people." It was like, no. "I really like this chick." And like, then people, the people have reason. that argument where, "Oh, Snape loved Harry." No, Snape no, loved he Harry's didn't. mother. He loved Harry. Harry. And he yeah. he really he was pretty he, abusive to his students. Yes, and yeah. he obviously played favoritism. And it's just like oh, yeah. this is not. I know at the end he redeemed himself by sacrificing himself and helping you live. And defeat yeah. Voldemort, but like, you're not the bravest man I know. You like, could have done it like, yeah. and not been Neville's worst nightmare <clears throat> that comes out of that. Yeah. yeah. Let, I want to talk about Neville. I love him. <laughs> at, I love the. I love the idea of the fact that he might have been Harry Potter if it weren't for just... I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. that blog post. Like, He's one he of my favorite underrated characters. One. I love it. I just love the, the twin plot lines that were taking them along the same, almost the same road of fate, and then just something happened to happen. Yeah. That it didn't end up being him, right? Mm-hmm. I was it always was a little sad instead. he didn't end up with Luna. In the movie, he, he kind of does. In the movie, he did. And I was, I was I actually like going to mention that, because I remember... In an interview with J.K. Rowling, she mentioned that they didn't end up together, that, you know, they actually ended up with different people. But then in the movie, you know, he basically says, where's Luna? I have to go yeah. tell her that I'm crazy and for I her. And I loved that. Oh, I, yeah. my God. They are my all-time, <laughs> like, I love them two together. Amazing. Because they I love like, that they changed that in the movie. They're, like, the outcasts that are, like, really underrated, but also, like, incredibly awesome and brave and smart. Like, and Luna's Harry always overlooked. One without yeah. them. Luna they're both always overlooked character. and dismissed yeah. because Luna's crazy they're, and Neville's They're more the characters I can see myself being, but I wouldn't be the one that... <laughs> but I'd help how I could, but I probably yeah. wouldn't be the one in the trio going on the adventures. That right. Yeah. The ones yeah. I, yeah. I'd like to pretend I would, but... I always wish I could write a character that was uh, awesomely quirky as she is. Uh, mm-hmm. Without yeah. it being like, okay, Trying, this is a bit yeah. much. Without it being obviously <laughs> Luna, yeah. <laughs> uh, question. Might be hard. Question for Lynn. On your plotting video, where, your, was there an explanation of your beat sheets? Michelle asks, if this question is a little late, Caleb always talks about how she uses beat sheets, and was wondering if you could explain more about what they are. So was were they in that video? Yeah, there's all. Um, I think they were, yeah. I, I think two separate um, videos. I made a video on beat sheets entirely, and then I made one on my plotting, and okay, I mentioned the beat sheets. Um, in my actual beat sheet video, I do link to um, the, I think, the beat sheet that I use. Um, I could throw a, another link um, in the description of uh, the live chat, too. Um, it's basically the same thing as the, the W um, that we were talking about earlier, where... Um, 
it's a four act structure to where you have the setup, the response, the attack, and the resolution. And then in each of those four parts are subparts and milestones that you have to hit. So just like the W, you know, you have pinch points, which is where you know the bad guys come in. You have the plot points, you have the midpoint, finale, uh, hook in the beginning. It's basically all these different like goals that you want to meet as you're writing out um, your story. Um, and then after you have the beach, you start plugging in all of those scenes that go in the middle of all of those um, milestones. But it's uh, storyfix.com. It's Larry Brooks. Um, that's the beat sheet that I like to use. Um, he has an, an entire blog uh, series on what each part means, what each part should have, the theme of each part, and like in-depth in um, information on it. So I'll put a link in the, the description Story below. Fix. Storyfix.com. And I believe it's called the Story Structure Series. Like, you'll find it, like, on the right-hand side um, on the links. And book BFFs is going on back to Harry Potter. Snape was taking revenge on James through Harry. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, <laughs> as much as I am upset with J.K. Rowling right now, I still hold to the fact that she's I don't, absolutely yeah. genius. Like, we could talk about Harry Potter for a very yeah, long time. Um, like, we yeah. can have an entire live chat on Harry Potter. And um, it'll be, like, four hours long. One day we should. Because there's yeah. not an excuse to talk about it anymore. So that's kind of why this news has brought everything yeah. up again. And it just... Yeah, it's so true. Well, actually, she's one of the best, um, like, uh, examples of an amazing plot. So naturally, yes. it would come up when we're talking about plotting. So. Yeah, I mean, like, she yeah, has so many smoking too. guns in there. It's ridiculous. Like, you'll read things later in the book, so you're like, and then you'll go through and reread the books, and you're like, holy crap. It says it right here in the first book. Yeah. Like, it yeah. foreshadows, There's a like, yeah. mofo. There's, she must have plotted the crap out of those yeah. books. Oh, she mm -hmm. did. I mean, like, seven actually, books. I've seen a picture of it. Yeah, I was book. just about to say, you. Sh there's pictures of her notebooks online that show you, like, all of the details she has. It's incredible. So, yeah. She I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. think I could write a no. seven book series. I don't think I could do a seven book series. To that be hard. extent. <laughs> and be that well connected. And each yeah. book was, like, almost equally as good as the rest. Like, yeah. there are yeah. my favorites. There's only, yeah. there's only one that I was, like, guess which the one. The whiny one? Is it the whiny one? Where he's all whiny? Yes. Five's my favorite. Five's my favorite. What? Get out of here. Really? Three is my favorite. I, I love all the like Dumbledore. Love series. Order of the Phoenix and Dumbledore's Army. I love all the like secret societies and yeah, I like that too. Though. That's true. See, I yeah, liked yeah. I liked Azkaban and then I liked um, Half Blood Prince. Those are my two favorite books and the two favorite movies in the the movie series because I just Which I really like really? Goblet of Fire. I hated the third movie. What? Really? I actually liked I it because I liked how it, it took that darker turn. I really, I, liked I, I really liked the darker liked it. turn, but I hated how much was like lost. Oh yeah, no, that's that was yeah. annoying. But I was, just, See, I, I love it. Still. I, I still like it because <laughs> I think it's because that's my favorite book. But I really like uh, Goblet of Fire. But Goblet of Fire movie. Oh, that's my least favorite movie. Like all the so like childhood. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, like my sister had to under the cloak books. and yeah, making the face. <laughs> she's going through all the books now, and Goblet of Fire is her favorite movie. And I'm like, wait until you read the book. There's yeah. so much to yeah. see. So much better. Like, oh, much better. The maze Which was is... my favorite part of the book. And then in the oh, movie, I'm yeah. so excited. And then I'm like, he's running through bushes. Like, that's it. <laughs> I just <laughs> learned all the other stuff. Where's I, like, the spider? When I first saw the movie, I remember my first point of outrage was that they cut the, like, the actual Quidditch game from the beginning. I'm like, oh, yes. I wanted to see it. Yeah, let me see it. I was Which so is excited. the movie with the with the really awful woman that takes over Hogwarts for a while? I can't remember. Umbridge, Umbridge, Umbridge. the fifth one. Umbridge. Umbridge. <laughs> She's oh, okay, it is. Cause I like I could watch. I, I ended up watching that one for some reason like five or six like dozen times because I just happened to own it somehow. And I'm just like every time I watch it, I'm like grinding my teeth for the like, <laughs> Yeah, I she was a good much. villain. But I think yeah, good, book five is so good. She's such a good villain. She's a you, good she villain. Is so a good much villain. rage for her. It makes me <laughs> so angry. Yeah. I want to crush her. Exactly. Yeah. I guess that's a good emotional reaction. Though. Exactly. Book five is working. excellent. Yes. <laughs> 
It's it's um, not bad. It's just my least favorite in the series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> another underrated character in the movie that I always liked is Filch. Like he always has like the best like oh, yeah. pop in. And you you don't know anything. I mean, there's one reference in Half Blood Prince that he's a squib. A squib. Yeah. But it's never mentioned at all. Jessica was reading the first book. She's like, wait, what's a squib? And she's like, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't know about this. I'm like, yeah, the more you know. <laughs> you learn a lot. <laughs> Did you miss well, so much we, watching the movie without the books? Do we have any more questions? Should we wrap this up? I think it's been like two I think hours. it's time to wrap it up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been two hours. So thank you, everyone, who stuck with us this long. We've yes, definitely got you. Yeah. yeah. Harry Potter brought a few more commenters out of the woodwork, which was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are passionate about Harry Potter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, does anyone uh, sign us off? Well, we'll be announcing our giveaway. Yes, uh, yes, yes. tomorrow. Because we have yes. 300 subscribers. We have like, 300 oh, more subscribers. Now. Yeah, and if you're, you know, if you're new and just we watching us for the first time today because we're talking about Harry Potter, please subscribe. Yeah, yeah. we love that. We get this yeah. crazy all the time. Or, you know, <laughs> like the video, let us know that you watched it. Because we yes. appreciate you guys watching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like and it's that. going to be a writing-themed giveaway. So there will be critiques, and there will be a book, and a lot of word nerd swag. So it's going to be awesome. So definitely keep your eyes open for that. Are we going to announce it on Twitter, probably? Uh, we'll, we'll throw it out everywhere. I we'll think, we'll put it not. everywhere. Yeah. You won't miss it, yeah. we promise. Yes. Yeah, Twitter, mm-hmm. Wattpad, Tumblr, our channel. Excellent. All right. Well, so goodbye, thanks for watching us, guys. Hey. We're here every week on Sundays. So. And 7 p.m. Day. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. And we have a new video yes. every day. Except, well, yeah, every day. <laughs> we have a new video every, every day. day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> I've got tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, bye. Okay. Signing off, bye guys. Goodbye. Bye.